and six record. But now it's time to turn the page to July. And what better place than in Toronto on Canada Day? Marcus Stroman has the name, but Josh Tomlin has had the game this season and makes a final audition for a spot on the AL All-Star team next on Sports Time Ohio. It's a holiday north of the border here in Toronto, Canada. It is indeed Canada Day. And native Canadians will be wearing the red as the Indians try to run their win streak now to 14 in a row as they take on the Blue Jays here at the Rogers Center. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. This win streak has been unbelievable. A win today would give them the outright all-time franchise record. And the starting pitching continues to be the story. But, Rick, when you think about it, overall, now the Indians pitching staff leads the league in ERA, complete games, shutouts. They've given up the fewest number of hits. But the starters are driving the bus. Boy, it, it's a lot of fun to watch because now what they're doing, they're starting to feed off each other. One goes out there. There is no weak link. When you look at them in that 13-game span, seven, uh, ten times they've gone at least seven innings, if not more. They've been outstanding. They're feeding off each other, and you look at it, they're hitting 165, a 186 ERA. But the amazing thing, pitches per inning. As a staff, it's 14.1. The best in the league when it comes to pitches per inning is Corey Clark at 14.2 so the whole staff is under that <laughs> it has been amazing and we're going to watch Josh Tomlin today he's going for his 10th win of the season and Josh Tomlin has more wins than walks yeah that truly is amazing we know Josh throws strikes he's very aggressive he tries to stay out of the middle of the plate he's given up 18 home runs 12 of them have been solos but he uses that cutter very well he mixes in a great curveball he spots a fastball when he has to he's a fun guy to watch pitch and I'll tell you what his teams rally around him five starts in June he is 2 and 0 he's undefeated on the road we'll see if he can continue that strength he's going to be matched up against Marcus Stroman who has struggled now in the month of June he's got a high ERA he's one and three he's a sinker ball pitcher but the key for him this afternoon is going to have to be the slider because he hasn't been able to throw a good one against a lot of teams they've been able to hit him and score a lot of runs so they're looking for a slider from him today to match up with his good sinker well the Indians offense has been clicking on all cylinders and they've been getting contributions from everybody one through nine in the lineup you look at a guy like Lonnie Chisinau over his last eight games with runners in scoring position mind you he's hitting 460 with seven runs batted in and the bat is starting to come to life the extra base hits a couple of triples three home runs in his last eight games uh, batting average over 400 Lonnie a big part of that bottom part of the lineup coming to produce but then again when you look at this streak everybody has shown up offensively for the tribe and there's no one man doing it they're doing it as a team and it's been a lot of fun to watch it is Canada Day here in Toronto so we've got a lot of pregame festivities it's going to push the start time back just a little bit Alan Jensen will take it away from the studio when we come back. Then we'll be with you shortly with today's first pitch between the Indians and the Blue Jays. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
will play from in front. There's a drive to deep right. He's out of room. It's out of here. And a swing and a miss. Got him. Got him looking. Oh! One strikeout shy of his career high with 14 Ks. The Indians have equaled the longest win streak in franchise history with their 13th in a row. A packed house here at the Rogers Center on Canada Day. We've just had the playing of both national anthems and we're just about ready for baseball this afternoon on a day filled with lots of color and pageantry and a raucous crowd expected to be filling the air with plenty of cheers for the hometown Jays. But the Indians are the story in baseball right now having won 13 in a row coming into this afternoon's game. Before we get underway let's go downstairs to our man Andre Knott with the here right sounds of the game. Frankie, as you get ready to play this game against the Toronto Blue Jays, I know you had a chance to see Roberto Alomar yesterday. Not the first time that you've met him, but how exciting for you seeing someone like Roberto Alomar and playing in front of him? It was very exciting. It was, uh, it was fun meeting him last night um, before the game. And, uh, you know, I grew up idolizing him. I grew up um, trying to be like him. And uh, it's just, I uh, thank his brother, that, you know, uh, Sandy's brother. Um, I thank Sandy that presented to me last year. And, uh, just yes, it was cool, you know, just seeing and interacting with him and talking to him. Being one of your favorite players and playing in the park, that he made a lot of history. And any any anything different for you playing in a park like this, knowing that you grew up watching him play here? It's really cool looking at center field and seeing his number up there. Um, I was trying to figure out what, if there was another number. And there's no more numbers up there. Um, and it's it's the, I love that number. I mean, that's one of the reasons I use it. And it it's cool seeing them. And it, it, it's especially being from Puerto Rico, it's just there's not a lot of words that can describe the, the excitement I had last night. As you guys go through this winning streak, running the bases, being aggressive on the base paths has been something that's been very important to you guys. Is that something that you guys have tried to make part of the game plan since day one in spring training? Of course, of course. I mean, we have the ability to do it. And um, like I said, we don't have any power guys that um, that is going to like hit 50 he's gonna hit um, 60 home runs you know there's only a few of those in the games we got Nap and Santana and the, those are power hitters you know but besides that we we got to continue to play the game the right way we got to um, run the bases hard and you see Nap um, he runs the bases as well as anybody in the game and uh, so uh, Santana you know Santana still got some bases on him and uh, you know we that's part of our game Best word in baseball is being consistent. You guys have the best month of June. How do you continue that in the month of July now that we're in July? Continue to um, be ourselves. If we, we if we continue to be ourselves, we we, we, we got to worry about nothing, you know. We we don't have to worry because I think we have what it takes. It's just a matter of continuing to be consistent, continuing to push each other, continuing to um, do things the right way. Kind of got a sense of listening to Francisco Lindor about the mindset of this entire team. It doesn't have a swelled head. It's not reading the press clippings. It's not really impressed with itself. They're just focused on today. And today is Marcus Stroman. He stands in their way, getting the start for Toronto. Josh Tomlin, meanwhile, will go for the Indians. And it's a team that has done a lot of the little things well. They have uh, played well on both sides of the ball. Obviously, the pitching has been the big story. We highlighted that, talked a lot about the starters, the bullpen, what they've been able to do. But the defense has been solid. It's yeah. played very good. And cool. the offense has been terrific. It's, it's scored early a lot. They've been able to play from in front most games. And uh, when they've had to, Rick, they've been able to score late as well. It goes hand in hand with their pitching. They have a, a confidence now, Matt, offensively, where they score early, they turn it over to their pitching, and they'll score late. And it's been a nice run for them, but it all stems from the pitching. Keys to the game are brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Quiet the big crowd early, and that's what starting pitching certainly can do. Get into hitters counts against Marcus Stroman and make him use his fastball. And for uh, Josh Tomlin, neutralize the two, three, and four hitters because they've changed the lineup a little bit, bumping Josh Tomlinson up into the two hole. Edwin Encarnacion third, Michael Saunders fourth. 
With that, we'll take a look at the starting lineup for the Indians under Terry Francona, brought to you by Progressive. Carlos Santana in the leadoff position. Jason Kitten is second. Francisco Lindor, after an 0 for 4 last night, bats third. Mike Napoli, Jose Ramirez, and Lonnie Chisnall are in the middle. Jan Gomes, Tyler Naquin, and Rajay Davis batting ninth went two for four with a double and a homer last night. And our Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher, Marcus Stroman for the uh, the Blue Jays, who is six and four and a high 5.33 earned run average. He has pitched 101 in the third innings, but given up 113 hits. Look, his sinker is is his pitch. He's a ground ball pitcher, but he has to have that slider go with his sinker. He hasn't uh, had a good blend going lately, but he does lead the league in getting ground balls. This is be his very first start against the Indians. He came out and pitched out of the bullpen in 2014 against him. So uh, we'll see what he has to offer tonight. Not a big guy, about five foot eight, but the sinker slider is his style. Let's check out the defense behind him tonight. Or today, I should say, it looks like this. Saunders is in left, Pilar in center, Korea over in right. Donaldson is at third, Tulowitzki at short, Barney at second, Smoke is at first, and Martin doing the catching. Vic Carapaza has the plate. DJ Rayburn at first, the crew chief, John Hirschbeck, is at second base, and Bill Welke down at third. We are ready to go. The Blue Jays. With their holiday uniforms, the red tops with the red caps. And you'll see lots of red throughout the ballpark here this afternoon. The Indians stand with their road blues. It's been a jersey that has brought them success and good luck, and you don't mess with a winning streak. And the pitch outside ball one were underway with the roof closed today. Lots of rain in the area in Toronto. But the next two days we should have the roof open. It's going to be beautiful both on Saturday and Sunday. The 1 0 grounded toward the second base side of the bag. It's toward Tulowitzki with the shift on. And one away. The shortstop actually making the play. Yeah, I saw the roof close. That's why I said tonight it's awfully dark out there. We had a beautiful, beautiful night last night with it open. But uh, three straight day games here to wrap up this road trip. Okay, starting. Kipnis us off with the slider. On a 12 game hitting streak, the longest by an Indian this year. Chopped up the middle. Two down. That time it was Darwin Barney, the second baseman, who made the traditional play. And it will bring up Francisco Lindor. Yes, yeah, Stroman first in uh, Major League Baseball for ground ball percentages 58.8%. So when he hits it on the ground, that's that sinker that he throws. It it's tough to get on top of. You're just rolling it into the ground. Pitch floats in there for a strike. And that's fouled off by Lindor. This is an 11 game homestand currently for Toronto. As the 1 2 pitch is in the dirt to Lindor. The Royals will follow the Indians into Toronto. And then they've got four against the Tigers to take them into the All Star break. Two, two line to left center. That's a base hit. 
Saunders over to cut it off the left fielder will hold Lindor to a two out single. Don't know if he tried to change the eye level there to, to Frankie or not but that pitch was uh, looked like a four seam fastball up. That wasn't his sinker and it stayed right there and he took advantage of it and that's one thing for Stroman he's got to keep the ball down to continue to get his ground balls but with two strikes Lindor gets a two out single. Now Mike Napoli with a runner at first and two down. And just in off the plate for ball one. That base hit for Lindor snapped an 0 for an 11, 0 for 11 slump. Napoli broke his bat. The third baseman Donaldson will go to first, and the inning is over. No runs, one hit, one left. Josh Tomlin goes to the hill to face the Toronto lineup when we come back. Under manager John Gibbons. Ezekiel Carrero will lead it off. Josh Donaldson, who homered for the Blue Jays' only run last night. That second, Edwin Encarnacion is third. Then it's Saunders, Martin, and Tulowitzki, who sat out last night's game. Justin Smoke, Kevin Pillar, Darwin Barney batting ninth. Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher, Josh Tomlin. Tomlin uh, coming off a very good start in Detroit. Went eight innings, six hits, three runs, all three. Came coming on solo home runs. For Josh, he's five and zero on the road this year in seven starts. So he has pitched brilliantly, and he's one and zero in his career against the Blue Jays. And a first pitch strike to Carrera. Carrera 0 for two last night. He did walk twice. Two quick strikes. And a breaking ball rings him up. That was quick. Yeah, it was two fastballs and a curveball, and it's there you go. Strikeout number one. This is not a game for those who stand and admire. If you watch Josh Tomlin, you're going to watch a lot of strikes go by. Yeah, you will. There it is. Is our Circle K strikeout coming on a dandy of a curveball, and he didn't take the bat off his shoulder, so out number one. Josh Donaldson. Takes a fastball strike. Forty two of Donaldson's eighty six hits have gone for extra bases eighteen doubles five triples in addition to the nineteen home runs. 
And that is deep into the corner, and it is a foul ball. Well, he didn't like it. He's yelling at the umpire at first base. He's looking to, into the dugout like it was going to be a fair ball. He's pointing to his manager. Well, he's on a dead run. Let's take a look at it and see. Clearly foul. Well, I don't see it hitting chalk. It, I mean, that's a tough angle to tell from, but he feels that it was a fair ball. He keeps looking in. They're not going to challenge it. Ball, ball. I'm sure you could go down there and see where the ball hit. Count is 0 2. And Josh Donaldson. Put a good charge into that ball going the other way. You see there a nine game hitting streak. He's had his struggles though this year. On May 19th. He was hitting 207. Since then he's batted 353. Strike three called at the lane reaction from Vic Carapaza and Donaldson drops his bat hands on knees. Two down. Well take a look at it Nissan pitch tracker they're going to go inside with him. He's saying if anything it might have been high it definitely had the plate. And if his complaint is anything it's going to be up. So Tomlin gets the first two guys looking top of the strike zone. Toronto had 17 strikeouts last night and they start out the day with two early here. Fourteen of those 17 strikeouts came against Carlos Carrasco tied for the second most in franchise history for a starter against the Blue Jays. The guy who has the record is Mark Langston. Yeah. And he said it in old exhibition stadium one year before this ballpark okay. opened. Okay. Was that 88 or something yeah. like that? And he struck out 18 in one game. A little bit high. And Encarnacion sitting 3 0. <laughs> Taking all the weights, 3 and 1. And Carnacion 0 for 3 last night with a walk. Indians want to be very careful pitching to him. Look out. Piece of the bat goes flying. Arch I never saw the ball. I saw the bat go one way and the ball yeah. obviously went the other. Straight back right off the end of it. How many times have we seen that on this road trip where it's splinters and a good portion of the bat flies out? How about the one last night? It was uh, Francisco yeah. Lindor. His bat literally exploded. There were. It seemingly hundreds of little shards that just flew yeah. off the bat right at home plate. Well, from 3 0 to 3 2, and now the payoff pitch. <laughs> Strike three called in. Carasio fires his bat to the ground, and he's out of the game. He's been tossed by Carapaza. Now he bumps the umpire, and he'll have a fine and possible suspension coming for that. Wow, what a start to Canada Day. The gloves are off, and now Gibbons has been tossed as well. Canada Day may turn into Boxing Day before this baby's over. Boy, I'll tell you what, they're emotional here early. Josh Tomlin strikes out the side, and two Blue Jays get the heave hole. Encarnacion and the manager, John Gibbons. No score after one, but plenty of fireworks here in Toronto.
left. On the bench there is the uh, new manager for the rest of the way. He's the bench coach taking over now for the ejected John Gibbons. And Jose Ramirez taking a first pitch strike for Cleveland leading off here in the second. And he lines one to deep left but Saunders is there to grab it. One away. Marlo Hale of course formerly a member of Terry Francona staff back in their yes. Boston days together. Yes he was. And sitting to the left of DeMarlo Hale is the pitching coach Pete Walker. <laughs> the emotions are flying high wow, here are they early ever? on Canada Day. Lonnie Chisinau following one back. Lonnie sat out last night's game. But has been terrific. 10 for 25 on the road trip. Currently riding a four game hitting streak. One ball, two strikes. Well, from, uh, I think for Stroman, a good pitch to move that hitter off the plate, and it was about 94 with that sinker that he has to open up the outside part of the plate. There, you, you see the difference mm -hmm. in both those pitches. That one up and in near that white stripe where the batter's box is for the lefties. Then the next one down and away, going away from them. Now on this road trip alone, Lonnie Chisnall has raised his batting average 17 points. In the dirt, good eye there. The mask of Russell Martin. Martin, I believe, is the lone Canadian native in the starting lineup today for Toronto. Oh, Michael Saunders, Saunders also. Right. Swung out and missed. He got him. Two down. First strikeout. There's Donaldson took one upstairs. He didn't like the call. He didn't say anything. And there's that little cutter away on the full count to Encarnacion. And he hated it. And he was ejected. He can't believe it. And then the manager ended up going. Gibbon said something he shouldn't have. Jan Gomes, the former Blue Jay, taking a strike. Boy, he got a rub down with that right arm before the game because it is firing. Gomes trying to pull it. And the third baseman Donaldson and makes a bad throw. And Gomes will stay at first base. He's lucky that ball didn't go into the seats. It yeah. caught the top of the facing behind first base. That's not very high down there. Can't be but three feet tops. The throw, he gets there in plenty of time and he throws it sidearm and really pulls smoke off the base. So we'll see how they score it. E5 on Donaldson. And a two out base runner for Tyler Naquin. Naquin won for four yesterday with a triple and a run driven in. Sinking fastball low and away. Donaldson his sixth error on the year and the 41st for the Blue Jays. They're rated third defensively when it comes to fielding percentage. In the month of June, Tyler Naquin leads all rookies in batting average, extra base hits, homers. He yeah, had eight consecutive extra base hits uh, at a time there before he mixed in a single. <laughs> and 
and a strike is called. Two and one. There's a pitch to hit and he ropes it the other way. Saunders over to cut it off. And Gomes will have to stop at second. Nice swing. Two on, two out. We'll go down to Andre. You know, Tyler Naquin said the one thing that he's learned so far in his rookie season is he's got to zero in on what he hits best. He's got to stay away from the high pitch. And he says when he gets the ball down in the lower half of the strike zone, like we saw there, he goes, that's the pitch he knows he can drive. That's what he's been doing over the last couple of weeks. That's why we've seen so many extra base hits off the bat of Tyler Naquin. He says he's learning. He's got to know himself better if he wants to be successful here in the big leagues. That's a pretty good observation, Andre, because he is a great low ball hitter. And, you know, if you concentrate down, you make that guy. That ball there, it was a sinker. It's, it, it was just a fastball. It didn't it? Didn't really sink away, and that's why he went the other way with it. But a nice swing on that one. There's Rajay Davis. Checked on a ball that was low and away. The Indians trying to take advantage of the extra out in this inning on the error by Donaldson. Just off the outside corner. Now the 40 plus thousand umpires are getting all over Vic. Well, they're saying you called that a strike on Encarnacion. How come it's not a strike now? <laughs> well, it was. But you see where Martin was tried well, to bring it yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, it was off. Davis had one to hit there, and he fouls it back. Two and one. Last night, this was the first pitch in an at bat, and Indians, uh, I think, to. Jason Kipnis, his home run was also on a first pitch. Well, he got him going. Got the first run on the board for him early. Broken bat. To Lewitsky will go to first. And that throws on the money. The inning is over. No runs, a hit. Two left. Middle of the second, no score in Toronto. I'll give you an opportunity to see the Indians defense today brought to you by Jeep. It looks like this. It'll be Davis and left, Naquin in center, Chisholm Hall in right, Ramirez at third, Lindor at short, Kipnis is at second, Napoli at first, Gomes behind the plate. A little too much commotion going on in the first. Didn't have time. Michael Saunders will lead off here in inning number two. He was showing bump there and fouled it back. Well, Ramirez was playing back sort of towards the, sh the hole at short third. So he was just going to try and take a bunt down the third baseline to get something started. But you know, when guys try that, that that's something they rarely practice at least. 
that we can see for a base hit. Missed outside. Michael Saunders grew up in Victoria, British Columbia. Popped him up. Playable for Jose Ramirez. One away. Time now to take a look at our Kia in the driver's seat. Pitches per inning. Corey Kluber is number one. Josh Tomlin is number two. And during this win streak, the Indian staff is number one. They're better than all that. Yeah, that, that's the amazing thing to me. 14.1, the whole staff is averaging. Swung on and missed. Russell York, or Russell uh, Martin, born in East York, Ontario. Makes his home now in Quebec. A little bit low. Nice breaking ball. Boy, he, he, he works both sides of the plate beautifully. Change speed, started that slow hook at him and let it drop over the inside corner. Hard hit ball, but foul. Martin, I mentioned, born here in Canada, in Ontario. Actually, uh, spent some time living in Paris when he was a youngster as well. Swung on and missed, and Josh Tomlin has struck out four of the first five batters here this afternoon. Well, he just shaves the outside edge, probably off the plate with that little cutter, but. So effective because you can see the late movement at it starts on the outside edge rolls off about four or five inches gets a swing and miss. Well located. Now Troy Tulowitzki. Sat out yesterday's ball game. Fresh off the heels of a, an emotional return to Colorado. For the longtime Rockies shortstop. His first trip back there since. They traded him here to the Blue Jays. The reception was wonderful. I think it was overwhelming for him. Well, yeah, I'm sure it was emotional for him. After all the time he spent up there. Tulowitzki is a career 297 hitter. The batted just 239 over the 41 games he played for the Blue Jays last year. And this year hitting just 215. But he plugs the gap here. Cut off by Naquin. And a two out single for Tulowitzki. Well, Indians baseball is live with the MLB.com at bat app. You can stay connected all season with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Just download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone or tablet. Now here's Justin Smoke, switch hitter. He was 0 for 3 last night. With the hat trick, striking out all three times. <laughs> Early in his career, Tulowitzki. Was a guy who definitely could run back in 09. He stole 20 bases in a season. And you quickly know, 0 and 
two on Swoboda. When you're a shortstop like Tulowitzki and you're at a, such a demanding position to steal bases, play every day at shortstop, hit in the middle part of the lineup, that's very taxing on your body. So the stolen bases you can do without, unless the game's on the line and you really need one. Matter of fact, the Blue Jays on the year, they're 13th in the league. They've only stolen 25 bases. Tulowitzki has one, and that's the only attempt he has made this year. Two strike pitch. Strike three call. Josh Tomlin with his fifth strikeout of the afternoon already. Blue Jays get their first hit. But Tomlin picking right up where Carrasco left off last night. Reminders you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. Third inning here at the Rogers Center top of the order. And the Blue Jays go back to a shift. Carlos Santana. He grounded out to Troy Tulowitzki, who's playing on the second base side of the bag. It seems like when he gets to two strikes and he's been aggressive trying to get ahead in the count when he goes for that 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 slider he, he tries to get you to swing and miss down in the dirt. The Indians have been able to take it for the most part to this point. Roberts won a deep center field. Back goes Pilar. He can't get it. And a one hop defense. And Santana hurries into second base with a leadoff double. 
Oh, it looked like Santana picked on that slider, and that was a line drive. Look at that, stayed out over the plate. He likes it away, and this goes right over the head of Pilar in center field. He thought he was going to track it down. It was just hit too hard. Santana with his 14th double and sets up this inning leadoff double. Really good swing on that pitch. And so now, the first legitimate scoring opportunity, if you will, is Kipnis showing Bunt pulled it back. Donaldson in at third. Now Kipnis takes its 2 and 0. Donaldson probably not looking for a bun anymore as Kipnis follows that off his foot 2 and 1. This has been the biggest issue, if you will, this year for Stroman. When he gets guys on base, with men in scoring position in particular, hitters are batting 347. And Kipnis wraps one right back up the middle and it's through. And the Indians will take the lead as Santana scores. And Jason Kipnis extends his hitting streak. Kipnis has now hit in 13 in a row as he drives home his 46th of the year. 1 0 Cleveland. Well, just like you said, he gets out of that, uh, you know, out of the stretch. This will be our AT&T high speed replay. Not only does he pull the ball, but he gets the bonus. It gets into center field so Santana can score. They were playing him a little more to pull. So Kipnis, another clutch RBI. Give him 46 on the season. Rick, hitters are batting 85 points higher than the league average against Stroman with runners in scoring position. It's hard to figure out. I mean, maybe that something happens to him. I don't know, but they, they were telling me his sinker isn't sinking like it used to, but it looks pretty good out of the windup. Yeah, he's still getting. And he doesn't have a big windup. He, he, no. uh, it's almost like he's out of the stretch from even when nobody's on. He's still got a lot of ground balls, but he must not be getting them. When he gets runners in scoring position. Yeah, they're, they're staying up. Lindor fouls one back. Although he did, technically, you could say he got a ground ball off the bat of Kipnis. Yes, went right he back did. through the well, hole. That's true. So, you know, when you're a pitch to contact guy and ground balls, but he has pretty good stuff, you know, because it's, you know, in the 90s. You know, you can get your ground ball, but sinker ballers give up a lot of hits. And on this field, we told you it's the first year they have the dirt out there. It used to be just cutouts, pads around the bases. Second strikeout for Stroman, one out here in the third as Lindor he is retired, and now Mike Napoli. And that, this infield is hard, and it's fast with the dirt out there, even though it, it, it's it's changed from the turf. Outside corner just shaved it for a strike. Well, he went outside. He jammed Nap on the first uh, go round, grounded to third base, and got deep in his kitchen. And then has to come up with a new bat. And it's low and away, 0 and 2. That was close to a strike, didn't have to, and Napoli just couldn't help himself. Stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Longest win streaks in the big leagues since 2000. Well, of course, we all remember the Oakland A's because they made a movie about it. Yeah. And then you got the Mariners who won 15 straight. That was that great season they had in 01. But the Indians have won. 13 in a row that equals the franchise record. 
and uh, 22 and 6 in the month of June, and we're just going to keep it here. It's I think it's June 31st today. <laughs> I like it. Ramirez pops it up. Right field, Carrera. Inning over. Carlos Santana started the third with a ringing double to straightaway center. Jason Kittness brings him home, and the Indians will play from in front today. Ten in a row over the Detroit Tigers, who are in town for a three-game series. And from five to seven, you can get two-dollar Budweiser cans out in the district in right field, and 15,000 fans will receive a batting practice pullover. And then after the game, we're going to have a fireworks display. Just go to Indians.com. Yeah, and hurry because there are limited seats yes. remaining for that game. Yeah, if you're interested in going, you better get your tickets now. Kevin Pollar. The number eight hitter in the lineup. Swing and a miss. It's one on one. Hey. Remember when we started this road trip in Detroit, I said we hadn't been to Detroit since the Cavaliers started their playoff run. Right. On route to the NBA championship. And the Cavaliers in the postseason this year went to Detroit, swept the Detroit. They went to Atlanta, swept right. Atlanta, went to Toronto, beat Toronto. And the Indians have swept Detroit. They've swept Atlanta. Yeah, well, they they won we the are. first one here. Yeah. The one two. Chopped the third. Ramirez. One away. Get on to Andre with more on Josh Tomlin. Very easy when you talk about this pitching staff to talk about who has the best stuff. Don't we all get in that conversation constantly? Sure. Well, talking to Tito this morning, he says, look, I'm, I'm sick of people talking about Tomlin not having stuff. Yeah, he can pitch. He's got one of the best cutters in the game. He's knowledge, his knowledge of hitters and how his stuff plays versus hitters is some of the top on the line of baseball. So he said, let's stop talking about him not having great stuff. He's a great pitcher that has stuff, and he knows how to use it. So let's give him credit for that for once. You know, Andre, when, the, when, when they get into the conversations, too, it's a, a lot of times it's about your miles per hour. Right. It's not about how you pitch and what you know set pitches up. He's the smartest pitcher we have in the staff. I'll say that. Well, you know that's the same thing Tito said. He goes, he loves how he uses his stuff. He goes, a lot of guys don't understand how their stuff works against a hitter. He goes, so I give him more credit because he knows how his stuff works and how to get guys out with yeah, it. He's fun to watch. Now the chuo. A little bit low and away. Darwin Barney went one for three last night with a double. Tomlin came back from three and zero to get Encarnacion in the first. Now it's three and one on Darwin Barney. And a 
full count. I don't know. These Blue Jays hitters are having a tough time making the adjustment here. Based on the strike zone and the way Tomlin's throwing strikes. Well, I, I wouldn't be looking. I'd be swinging. Uh, no, no question. And he does swing. He lines the base hit in the right field. Yeah, he stayed on it, too. Tomlin came back. He wasn't going to walk him. Look, he had two, two walks in the whole month of June. So he comes back and throws a strike. Bernie stays on it. And just that's what they're going to have to do. If you want to hit Tomlin, you better take it the other way. You try and pull that little cutter away, you're not going to get it. So they get their second hit. It's a one out single. And it brings up Ezekiel Carrera, who saw exactly three pitches his first time up, took all three, and walked back to the dugout. Two fastballs and a breaking ball. Swings at the first pitch this time and fouls it off. Well, they'll make an adjustment now the next time around when they see the, the umpire's zone. They know Tomlin can put it off the plate if he wants to. So they're going to have to make an adjustment as a, as a team. The approach was just shown to you by Barney. When you're at first base, you've got to be ready when Josh Tomlin's on the mound, whether you're the runner or the first baseman. Because you never know when he's just going to wheel and fire it over there. Two quick strikes again on Carrera. How many hitters have we seen? Look at them. Walk out of the box, shake their head, look in the look his disappointment. You know what, fellas? It may be a wide zone today. I will give you that. There's no question. It's it's bigger than normal. But you know what? You better make an adjustment. You can complain all you want, but it ain't gonna change Josh Tomlin's pitches. No. That fastball took off on him. One of the rare times he really missed with a pitch. Normally, this is the one thing I like about Tomlin. Every pitch with him has a purpose. And when he gets ahead of you, he tries to, if, if he misses, it's for a reason for a, another pitch he's going to throw to you. That was one that got away, a rarity for him. Hit on the ground to Lindor. He'll step on the bank, throw to first. Double play ends the inning. So Josh Tomlin gets a two for one ball. And after three, it's Cleveland one, Toronto nothing.
Welcome to Ride with Tribe First Base Coach Sandy Alomar in Velasano. The first 50 people to join get free registration, Indians bike jersey. Look, folks, you can be a hardcore rider or you can be a, a, like me and you ride your bike once a year and you can get involved. You can be part of the event. It doesn't matter. All the money raised goes to uh, fight cancer. So log on to Velasano.org and register today. It's a great way to get involved. Now, Sandy, he's kind of a hardcore rider. I, I couldn't keep up with him for a block, let alone 50 miles. But if you're one of those guys, there's that part of the event. Yeah, he's definitely a, a, a rider. You want to bring your tricycle out? I, I think that's OK, too. Lonnie Chisinau with a bouncer to first took a little bit of a funny hop on the edge of the carpet there but smoke stays with it one down. Well you can get your Jan Gomes bobblehead and that'll be courtesy of Sports Time Ohio on Saturday the Yankees coming to town for the first and only time this year plus you can uh, visit our pregame block party presented by T-Mobile in the right field district Key Bank will be providing special Specials for all fans all weekend long. Jan Gomes takes a strike. Gomes reached on an error by third baseman Josh Donaldson in the second inning. Tribe's lone run came in the third on an RBI hit by Jason Kipnis. Look out. While we have a moment, want to send out uh, best wishes to Kathy O'Brien and Andy Tobaleski. They're getting married today. It's a 3 p.m. first pitch in Euclid. <laughs> so first pitch. <laughs> best wishes, to Kathy and Andy. Yes, indeed. Good luck. Gomes went fishing. Fourth strikeout for Stroman. Two down in the inning. <laughs> Also, happy birthday wishes to Mike Marquette in Ashland, Ohio, celebrating his 58th birthday. Now, the Indians have a 1 0 lead. And when the Indians have scored first this year, they are now 36 and 7. Tyler Naquin takes a breaking ball for a strike. Naquin had a good AB his first time up. Stayed inside the ball and shot it down the left field line. Saunders cut it off, so it kept him to a single. Chops it by the mound. On the hurry, Barney throw. Close play. They got him by a whisker. And the inning is over as the tribe goes one, two, three. Middle of the fourth in Toronto. Blue Jays trail the tribe one to nothing.
Thanks Al. Boy how nice is it to see the Indians 18 games over 500. Didn't it seem like just a couple of days ago they were fighting and scratching to you know stay above that 500 mark and now they've blown it, by it. Yeah well that's what two weeks of winning will do. Josh Donaldson Ooh. taking a strike. He's quickly in the hole 0 and 2. He was rung up his first time up. All three Blue Jay hitters in the first inning were called out on strikes. And I'd be willing to bet you that Encarnacion's histrionics alone wouldn't have gotten him thrown out had it not been for the way Donaldson reacted right in front of him. Donaldson dropped his bat, hands on knees. Well, he actually in Encarnacion threw the bat too. You know, he sort of threw and it down. Did, and, and that wasn't enough to get him thrown. Yeah. It was still something that he said after that. Chops it by Tomlin. Kipnis will throw him out. One away. Well, Josh Tom is a guy, if he gets a little, he'll take a lot. He gets that call there, and now he's going to stay on the edges. That curveball, it comes in very nice. It's, it's, a, it's a high strike zone today, and it's a wide strike zone. But he is taking advantage of everything he's getting. And that's the kind of pitcher he is. He doesn't have to give in. Off the end of the bat, just beyond the reach of Kipnis. It was shades of the no hitter in Tampa last year. He was so close. But Encarnacion dumps it in. Is that Travis? I'm sorry. Travis, yes. Devon Travis with a base hit. After Encarnacion was run his first time up. One out base runner now for Michael Saunders. Popped up on the infield is only time up. Two balls, no strikes. He hasn't had. Uh, this might be the. Well, he had one other 2-0 count and went to 3-0 and when he came back. That was on Barney. He was also down in Carnacion 3-0 first time up. Remember, he came back and struck him That's out. That's right. Saunders might have helped him out there. Two and one. Well, when you throw as many strikes as, as Tomlin does as a hitter, you're looking to, you're, you're expecting a good pitch. And he elevated it. It went above the belt, and he certainly did help him out. Swung at ball three. But that's, again, going back to what we talked about last inning. If you're sitting around look, waiting for a walk, you'll be waiting a long time. Yeah. Just eight, doesn't do it very often. No, eight walks on the season. Was close. Not that he was going anywhere. Shave the outside corner. And now Saunders, two and two. Well, I'm telling you, that's going to happen all day long. This is the proverbial we talk about. You said it before, sitting in the rocking chair catching Tom on. You just move boom. in, out, boom. Yeah. You just put your fingers on, you make the call, and I'll hit your target. And 
and he's out looking. I don't know what he's looking yeah. at. That ball's right well, down the middle of the plate. I'll tell you what, they can keep complaining all they want. It's not going to change. That is strikeout number six. You know, that's. They can go in there and, and whine about it, but if you don't make an adjustment, it's going to continue like this all day long. Two down now for Russell Martin. Struck out his only time up. And a fastball strike over the outside corner. Well, see, there's there's the other catcher trying to trying to switch the tide. Well, that's the veteran not showing the umpire yeah, up, but no, simply no. saying, "Hey, I, I thought oh, this or I thought oh, that." That was close. His foot yeah, almost he almost came off. came off. But you're right. He's trying to do it in his own subtle way. His foot almost came off the back. If it did, watch it comes this way. Napoli keeps it applied. All right. That was a rather unorthodox way of getting back yes. to the bag. Napoli did well to grab that. That was a little bit off target. He had to go around the runner. You know, that's been part of, of, of Josh's routine since he. He's come up. He always pays attention to detail to runners. Fields his position very well. Guys don't even have leads. He's throwing over there just because he's programmed to do it. Right down Broadway, and Martin admiring it. It's 0 and 2. It does seem like a lot of times when Tomlin throws over, he'll throw over. Before he set, before the runners even all the way out yeah. to his leadoff spot. Yes, he'll start up in his windup and throw over. Breaking ball, and Martin got a piece of it. We're in the fourth inning. Indians leading at one to nothing. Tying run at first with two down. Ball a little bit high, and Martin laying off one ball, two strikes. Russell Martin is 33 years old. Right field, and will drop. Chisenhall fires it back in. And the Blue Jays have runners at the corners with two down. Well, Martin stayed on that one that time, taking them the other way. So when you think about it, of, of all the hits that they have, three of them have gone the opposite field. And you know, I know Chisenhall wanted to come in and try and make the play, but on that turf, he couldn't risk it. Had to break back and give the base hit there. So it'll be first and third now with two outs. Tulowitzki, who's single in his first at bat, is coming up. Just inside ball one. 
to Lewicki has been a good hitter his entire career. But obviously with the numbers he put up last year after coming to Toronto and so far this year many are wondering if the magic hasn't worn off. He is 31 years old. But when those are your career numbers and you're batting 215 on the year it's easy to understand why people would wonder. But he can still swing the bat well maybe not as consistently as he has in his career. Three and zero. Oh. Blue Jays threatening with two down here in the fourth. And Tomlin has issued his first walk. And only the ninth of the year. But the bases are loaded with two down, and Justin Smoke will be the batter. Well, it didn't look like he wanted much to do with Tulo in that situation. Uh, four straight pitches. When you walk him, you've got Smoke coming up, even though he is a left handed hitter. Josh was able to strike him out the first time, so we'll see how he goes. We'll see if he comes right back. And he pounded him inside after he got strike one in his last at bat away. Went with two strikes in. Infield pulled around to the right. Kipnis back on the outfield turf. Lindor shading him straight up the middle. And a strike over the outside corner. Comes right back and throws a strike. That's what made me feel like I don't think he wanted a whole lot to do with Tula Witz. I agree with you 100%. He never really gave him anything close to the zone. No, he did not. Swung on and missed. It's quickly 0 and 2. There's that uh, little cutter away. Swings through it. And so Tomlin trying to get out of a big jam here. And the 0 2 pitch is in the dirt, but he did not chase it. But that's the confidence. A, the catcher has to have to call it. B, the pitcher has to have to throw it in the dirt. Yeah, and if he swings and misses and stays around a plate, you just pick it up and step on the plate. You don't have to throw it. And a one-two. Ground ball to Kipnis. He's got it. And the inning is over. The Blue Jays leave them loaded as Josh Tomlin works out of trouble for the first time today. And after four, it remains Cleveland one, Toronto nothing.
brought to you by Levin Furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. By your Northern Ohio Honda dealers. And by the Cleveland Clinic. Access anytime, anywhere. One nothing Cleveland, another dandy. Last night was a thriller right to the end. More of the same this afternoon on Canada Day. Rajay Davis leading off for the Indians here in the fifth. And the former Blue Jay tries to bang one through the right side of the infield, but Barney makes a fine play and throws him out. Yeah, ranging to his left, he's going to make the play, slide, make a U turn, pick up, and throw to first. Good play. If you're tuning in from Cleveland and you're not familiar with the list of Canadian national holidays. The reason this is a one o'clock game on a Friday is that 149 years ago today, Canada became independent. So next summer, be the 150th celebration of Canada Day, and I imagine they're going to take it up a notch or two. Pulls it. That stayed That's, fair. Yes, it is. Fair ball right over the bag. Two down. Our in-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Jason Kipnis with an RBI single that came in the third inning after Carlos Santana led off with a double. And that's it. Hits are even at four apiece. Josh Tomlin started the game by striking out four of the first five batters. Kind of set the tone. Well, now that uh, Stroman, he's starting to settle in as well after giving up the back to back hits where the Indians scored. Eight straight, he is retired. The RBI single for Kipnis in the third extended his hitting streak to 13 games. And a tapper right back to the mound. Quick inning for Stroman. He did exactly what he needed to do, and Allen put Josh Tomlin back out there in the bottom of the fifth, leading it one to nothing.
Get a look in from the flight deck. Which is where Josh Donaldson hit his home run yesterday. Well over 400 feet away. Well I remember. Back in the day Jim told me hit one up into that restaurant they used to have up there that was higher than that flight. Yeah, it's deck. just you remember that it's actually right there. That's exactly where he hit. Okay. It, right there. Yeah right. that would have been in that man's salad. Yep. No balls two strikes. Up and away. I'll tell you, Stroman did what he had to do. He went out there and had a nice one, two, three, a quick inning to get Tomlin right back out there after he had to get work his way out of that inning. Down the line, but foul. Been out of play. Doesn't seem like much, but when you're on the verge of trying to get on the board, you got to get your offense right back into the dugout. Slaps it the other way to base hit. So all right, they're uh, they're starting to learn. They're going the other way on Tomlin. Great clip of the game from last night, Carlos Carrasco. After the game, John Gibbons said he was, yeah, he was just really good, and that that's the story. You have to tip your cap sometimes to a guy that goes out. When you hear that from an opposing team, you know the guy was awesome because they say there's nothing we can do. He struck out 14 and 7 in the third innings. He was brilliant. Every hitter in the Blue Jays lineup struck out at least once. Well, you could take it even a step further. Every Blue Jay that played in the game struck out once because Russell Martin pinch hit and he struck out the <laughs> only time he was up. Two guys struck out three times each. First time through the order here today the Blue Jays were two for nine against Tomlin with a couple of singles five strikeouts Darwin Barney is the ninth man in the order so this will conclude their second trip through they have three hits with a walk and one strikeout to this point second time through the order Tomlin would be a great guy to hit and run on because he's, he's always around the strike zone and if you have a hitter that can handle the bat. You do you could do no wrong starting your runner if you trust him to hit it on the ground. But I'll tell you what they're doing now the second time through. That first time through they had two hits they were two for nine they have three hits. Three for seven the second time through because they're starting to take them the other way. Yeah all three hits right handed batters going to right field. Right back up the middle. And right there he was sitting on, the, on something that he could shoot to right field but the speed of the pitch and the breaking ball slowed it down and he could hit it up the middle. So now they start with back to back singles there it is and that's one that was middle of the plate down. But with the approach of taking it the other way he goes right back up the middle. Well they've set the table with the bottom of the order. And now Ezekiel Carrera. Might be bunting here, so they'll look to the corner infielders to pinch. Here's the problem, though, that Toronto finds itself in. If Carrera bunts, you'll walk Donaldson because it's not Encarnacion batting behind him now, it's Devon Travis. Well, we'll see. It's a guy that can handle the bat. So you would expect, or at least think, he's going to try and move him along. But it's only the middle part of the game. He bunts. Tomlin fields it. Nobody at third. He'll have to go to first, and it's close, but he got him. Boy, I'll tell you what, he caught a break. The look to third base really could have hurt him. It could have hurt him, but he didn't. He gets the out at first base. I'm curious if Josh didn't know the play was on or if Ramirez made a mistake. No, there. no, no, no. Ramirez has got to break in, but he never broke to get back to third base. He just stayed there. 
So Tomlin was lucky enough and unfortunate enough to see that. See, Ramirez just stayed put. I don't think he even thought about going back to third base. So now the tying run 90 feet away. You got to walk him here, right? No, you don't have to. You can go ahead and try and pitch, pitch to him or pitch around him. With his control, you see if he wants to get himself out with his aggressiveness. If you get to 2-0 or something like that, you could. But Travis is, is uh, you know, it's better than having to face Encarnacion, who's leading the league in RBIs. Let's put it that way. Well, we'll see what they decide to do here, and they will just put yeah, them on. Yeah. Okay. They're going to intentionally walk them. There you go. No. They discuss what to do after this. So this will be the second walk of the afternoon. And one at first intentional. And you have the ground ball double play to get out of the inning. So the second straight inning that they have had the bases loaded. This one, though, with one out. Last inning it came with two. Devon Travis did dump a single into right field his last time up, just beyond the reach of Jason Kipnis. And Tomlin trying to pull the rabbit out of the hat here in the fifth. With the base is loaded and one out. In the air, foul, right side, and seats. Just out of play. Watched him go through these first four plus innings. You know he's going to throw you a strike or be awfully close to the plate. I think it's just a matter of not trying to do too much as a hitter. Tomlin, of course, looking for the ground ball. He wants to get out of the inning and hit it at one of my guys. Back out of play, 0 and 2. Displeasure. Oh, that's that's unbelievable. Catch a break, but you you got to come back. You got to you got to make a pitch. DJ Rayburn, the first base umpire, failed to ring him up. Went up top to change his eye level. I want to see what this pitch is uh, coming. Cut her away. With the bases loaded and one out, the 2 2 pitch. Foul back. Travis having a good at bat. Well, he was, yeah, just got a piece of that one to stay alive. That was a cutter down on the way as well. And he shook off Gomes twice in that sequence. He wanted him to try and pull that pitch and go for a double play.
Yes, he did that time. Yes, he did indeed. He wasn't going to get the break twice. He got one the first time, and that's just a great job by Tomlin. He knew it, too. Elevated. Sure, he did. He elevated it. And let's check the sequence out. He, he could have had the first one, but he didn't complain. Popped up the first pitch. He gets him down 0-2. That's the one you think you wanted. Didn't get the call. He said, okay. Went cutter away. Get him looking away. Another good cutter away. Let's go back up stairs and got the swing. Well done. That was set up by two pitches away for him to go up and bite at that strike right there. It's two outs. One more to go. And Michael Saunders is the batter 0 for 2. Out on strikes his last time up. Boy, that's that's a pitch right there. Just missed inside. One and one. Well, he's had to work hard these last two innings now. Bases yes, loaded in the fourth. Sure Bases loaded again here in the fifth. And you know, you don't see Tom with this many strikeouts. So he's had a lot of swings and misses. He, he's got a lot called. Right. Is what he what he's done, but he needs one more out to get out of here for a good solid five. Oh, now that's a pitch he's been getting all day. That time he didn't, and now it's two and one. Take a look at it. You see. Little off. Gomes trying to frame that on him a little bit. To center, Naquin makes the catch. Inning over. The Blue Jays leave them loaded for the second straight inning. And it's still Cleveland one, Toronto nothing. Greater coverage of baseball. Carlos Carrasco over his last two starts. 2 0 and 0 55 ERA. And if you go back to his last 25 road starts, this is going back to the, his return to the starting rotation in August of 2014. How about that? 15 wins, five complete games, and three shutouts. Road Warrior. Yeah. Tomlin through five now. He's five and zero oh on the road this year. Let's see what the offense has in store here in the sixth inning. Francisco Lindor, Mike Napoli, Jose Ramirez do up. See if they can make Marcus Stroman work a little bit. He breezed through the last two. Actually, he's breezed since the back-to-back -back hits in the third inning. 
Yes. Started when he struck out Lindor and then Napoli. Yeah, you need base runners because we told you when he has runners in scoring position out of the stretch, he struggles. But, you know, when you look at his windup, man, it's, it's almost like, you know, coming out of the stretch. Just, to, you know, like a lot of pitchers nowadays, they don't have much to it. Just a simple, let's come home. Which really tells me it must be more mental than physical. You get runners on base, you start thinking, uh oh, what are you, doing? you start right. thinking about everything that can go wrong instead of just executing, That's doing your job. Good slider there. Full count. Now the payoff pitch. And Lindor fouls it off. That's not where he wanted it. Got away with it. Well, he came back with a slider. I thought he'd go with his good sinker that he has going down and away. Let's see what we have. There it is. That's the pitch, man. That's your bread and butter right there. If I'm a hitter and I, you know, you, you need him to throw one good strike, watch. It's at the knees. It's going down. Boy, that's a that's a money pitch that's, right there. That's he did well just to get right to that live ball. for one more pitch. That's his bread and butter there. You're a catcher. You can sit right in the middle of the plate, and call for that, and just let him start it out at the knees and let it work. A good at bat by Lindor. He doesn't want to walk him. And Frankie's falling off a lot of a lot of pitches, so he is making them work. Tenth pitch of the at bat. He hits one high in the air, deep left center. Pilar on the move and makes the catch. One away. Baseball superstars will be on display for the primetime event of the summer. All-star game for Petco Park in San Diego, Tuesday, July 12th, only on Fox. And Mike Napoli 0 for 2 to the plate. Napoli. Grounded out on the first, struck out on the third. Now, if you go back to his first at bat, he really jammed Mike to get him out on a ground out to third, and everything else has been away. Well, that last at bat, Rick, it was, it, it almost looked like Napa was predetermined. I'm swinging at every pitch that comes up here because he wasn't close to any of them, and none of them were close to being strikes. Oh, he had one to hit, and he knows it. Oh, that one was right there. Well, that's one you may get in that bat you you put in play. He, he he didn't do it. That was a flat one too. That did not move. That stayed there. That was on the same plane. He released it. It might have got in on him just a bit where right. he missed the barrel and he couldn't quite hammer. But I'm not saying hit home run. Just a nice line drive. That's one you could just hit hard somewhere. The one two. And he strikes him out again. Two down. And that's 11 in a row retired by Marcus Stroman. That's a good pitch. You expand it. It's not a strike. It ends up out of the strike zone, but you get the swing and miss. His fifth strikeout. And Ramirez taking that's in there for a strike. Jose is lined to left and fly to right. He's riding a five game hitting streak coming in. A 
little low. And Ramirez did well to lay off. Because out of the hand that ball probably looked like it was going to be a strike. But it dipped out of the zone. As did that one and it's two and two. And the pitch is it to first. 12 straight, 12 straight for tired by Marcus Stroman, but it's still 1 0 Cleveland. Savings and access to Tribe Rewards. And today's Tribe Rewards TV code is Geminis. Visit Indians.com season tickets for complete details. Tomlin coming back now for the sixth. He's had a couple of tough innings. And the Indians bullpen is up and getting loose. Looks like Otero out there. It'll be Martin to Lewitsky and Smoke, the hitters duo to face Tomlin here in the sixth. A nice little cutter gets a swing and miss. Martin struck out in the first. He singled in the fourth on a nice hit, taking it to right center field. I don't know if he hurt himself on that swing, but he's stepping out of the box and taking a second before he gets back in. 1 1 pitch. Nice curveball by Josh. He's had a good feel for that ever since the first inning. Two walks today for Tomlin. One intentional. Seven strikeouts. Doubled up on that pitch and missed. The Jays with six hits on the afternoon. The Indians with just four, but all singles. In the ball game, and Santana has a double, and that is it out of the 10 hits. Woo. Got him upstairs, and Martin's not going to like that call, but it has been a strike. We mentioned today, now he's really going to get his beef hit because he's sitting behind the plate catching the Blue Jays pitcher, saying there's no way that that ball is a strike. But it's a high strike, but it, he has called it, I will say this, all day. It hasn't changed yet. That's a, about the same pitch that Donaldson got called out on in the first inning. But he goes up with a fastball, and it's a high strike zone today, folks. What are you going to say? Strikeout number eight for Tomlin. Now the crowd going to get into it. <laughs> they have been against Vic Carapaza all day long, ever since the first inning. 
Tulowitzki, one for one. Line drive to center field, put away by Naquin. So out number two. Well, just like we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Tomlin in his last inning really had the work out of it. Boy, did he ever. He had the intentional walk. He got the check swing. That was the at bat. Set him up. And then Saunders hits a line drive. He gets out of that inning. And I thought maybe he was going to be done. But no, Terry sends him back out there. He gets the first two guys out. And that is smoke left center field. It is out of here. We got a tie game. He stayed on it and took him to left center field. Justin Smoke, his eighth home run of the year. And they are starting to make that adjustment on Tomlin to go the other way. That one was high and deep. A fastball away, a little bit off the plate, but he stayed on it. You can see the shift they have for him on the infield. And Rajai goes back, keeps going back, runs out of room, and we have a new ball game, and now the crowd's getting into it. Pilar now, fake bunt. He's taking one all the way. He's one for two today. First run Tomlin has allowed today coming in the bottom of the six. There's a breaking ball and he should be out of the inning. The throw by Ramirez over there and Tomlin a little upset right now. But what are you going to do? We're going to leave this six inning tied at one. Brought to you by the Injury Lawyers at Elk and Elk. Proud partner of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. And by Ford. Built Ford Tough. Well, Josh Tomlin giving up the solo home run to Justin Smoke. And it's a tie ball game now as we head to the seventh inning. Of more importance to the Indians is... The offense, it has disappeared. 12 straight have been retired by Marcus Stroman. Well, he's been very good today. Only allowed four hits. Left hander Brett Cecil up in the bullpen. But Stroman just over 80 pitches on the afternoon. Now that left hander. Up in the bullpen, maybe for the top of the lineup here as we're winding down here. And Lonnie Chisholm lines one in the left for a base hit. Good swing there by Chisholm on that sinker down and away. 
His third at bat. He'll get his first hit. And extend his hitting streak to five in a row. Just take him the other way. Nicely done. So there's your leadoff man aboard. And up comes Jan Gomes, who is over two. High fly ball, right field, over near the line. Carrera makes the catch. One away. Let's get on to Andre. You know, we often talk about making a negative into a positive. And for Marcus Stroman, last year was a tough year as he suffered an ACL injury in spring training. Didn't come back until September. But what it did help him do is go back to Duke University and get his degree. Just this past May, he was able to do that. He says last summer was a tough summer. But because of his ACL injury, he grew as an individual and was able to get his degree. He got stronger mentally, physically. And through it all, he feels like he's a better pitcher today because of what he went through last year. And he also promised his mom he would get his degree. And he was able to do that this year as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's taking advantage of the situation. Always good to make uh, make good on your word to mom. Yeah, no question. Well, Tyler Naquin one for two today. Out of play. Struck him out. Yeah, good pitch. Tied him up. Number six for Stroman. Two down. Well, today it's been uh, some sliders down, good sinkers. But that slider's been an effective pitch when he gets the two strikes to the right handers. He's been able to put them away. And then the left handers, he's thrown that good sinker. But six strikeouts on the afternoon. Rajay Davis 0 for 2. Well, this guy doesn't look like he's the the one that pitched in the month of June. No. You know what I'm saying? They 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 said, well, his sinker's been a little flat. It certainly has not been today. And it kicks off of smoke, and everybody's safe. Smoke had it looked like he did a good job of getting to the ball, but when he misplayed it, it didn't just drop in front of him or roll a few feet away from him. It rolled a good 10, 15 feet away well, from him. He's coming off the back there, and it's just right in front of him. I don't know why he crawled on the ground like that, but when it hit his glove, it took off. I want to see how they score that. But that ball trickled away. I would think they'd give him an error in that situation. That's a ball or a play that I would think has to be made. But it extends the inning for the Indians and it gives Santana an opportunity. And it is an error charge yeah. to Justin Smoke. Second error of the, uh, the afternoon for the, the Jays. But now can they take advantage of it? Here's Carlos Santana, one for three. He doubled back in the third and scored the Indians' only run. Well, he got a slider away, and that at bat that he hit the double in the third and put a really nice swing on. It. And back comes Stroman to throw him the first pitch strike for a slider. Be interesting with Cecil warming up in that bullpen. Should Santana reach? If they go get him for Kipnis. Well, it's outside two and one. I'll be shocked if they didn't. Let's let's hope they have to make that decision. Yeah. Because if they do, want to see. there's a good chance it means the Indians have either loaded the bases or taken the lead. Just a bit outside. Did you see? Did you see how Martin held that pitch? And now 
He takes his mask off behind home plate and it looked like Strowman said something and now Martin's going to chime in. He held it for quite a while. Russell Martin better be careful right here. Because he was rung up on a pitch that he didn't like the last time he was up. Yeah well there you go it's a pretty good pitch although it looks like it's off the plate but uh, like I said emotions it's going to be like that all day. Outside ball four. Here's, here's what we'll see. We'll see if they go. And now we'll see what decision That's is made. The first walk for Stroman this afternoon. Here comes DeMarlo Hale. Yeah, he's going to make the call. And he will go to Brett Cecil. Look at he's upset now. Look he's, at he's going to start. You know, he's, he's going to get thrown out of here is what he's going to happen. Look at Donaldson in front of him. He's, he's saying look we've all yelled at him today and it hasn't worked. He's going. Watch. He's going to say something. I can see it coming. I'd be surprised. I think he was told by his teammates, don't say anything. Because it's just going to cost you money at this point. Well, that, that was a hard walk for him, I'm sure. Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made for lefty Brett Cecil. And he'll come into a bases loaded two out situation to face Jason Kipnis when we come back. Game with the bases loaded in two outs. And the new Blue Jays pitcher is Brett Cecil, who just came off the DL yesterday. And in his first outing, was very good. He pitched one inning, and it was a 1 2 3 8 with a strikeout. Now he's on to face Jason Kipnis, who was 1 for 3 with an RBI, drove in the Indians' only run back in the third. Showing bunt, not sure how committed he was to it, but it's called a strike. I don't know if he saw Donaldson way back at third base and figured I might try it. Or thought maybe he could drag it by the pitcher. I don't know. Well, I haven't seen that from Jason yet, but. He's going to have to work now down in the count 0 2. Cecil comes right out and hits with two quick ones. Heads up for anything in the dirt. Fly ball center field. Back goes Pilar. Makes the catch. Indians leave him loaded. Stretch time in Toronto with tied at one.
on Friday July 8th before the tribe will take on the New York Yankees for five to seven out in right field the district enjoy two dollar Budweiser cans plus dollar dogs all evening long after the game you can check out summer anthem fireworks it's presented by Wayside Furniture go to Indians.com and get your tickets today. Dan Otero comes out of the bullpen to pitch here in the seventh after Josh Tomlin went six innings gave up one run on seven hits walked two struck out eight one of those walks was intentional. Darwin Barney to lead it off and Dan Otero fires the first pitch strike. Chopped up the middle. Lindor had to wait back on it. Fires. Got him. Injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Toronto, of course, missing Joey Bats. And former Indian Gavin Floyd, who made this club and has pitched out of the bullpen this year. Ezekiel Carrera over two lay down a sacrifice bunt his last time up. During the Indians 13 game win streak the Indians starting pitching staff has compiled an earn run average of one point eight six and Tomlin went out and did his job today six innings one run allowed. Yeah unfortunately it was a two out home run it wasn't that bad of a pitch he stayed on it and took it the other way. They had opportunities two innings prior to that with the bases loaded and they couldn't get through so it was a two out solo home run that tied it. This one will be a battle of bullpens the rest of the way as Ezekiel Carrera is rung up two down. If you compare the Indians 13 game win streaks. This is the three times it's happened in franchise history and this is the longest streak ever. Wow. Look at that. The runs per game that's the highest. The starters ERA that's the best. I guess when you look at it that way you can see why. Yeah, that run differential is pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah it's impressive is right. Out of play by Josh Donaldson. Up and away, one ball, one strike. Donaldson was called out on strikes in the first, grounded out to second base in the fourth, and then intentionally walked in the fifth inning. Good pitch away, that sinker. Otero and Donaldson, teammates back with the Oakland A's a few years back. 2013 and 14. To right field. And Lonnie Chisenhall makes the catch. The Blue Jays go in order. We go to the eighth. Deadlocked at one.
telecast is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. 1-1 ball game, eighth inning. And for the Indians, the 3-4-5 hitters do up for Toronto, new pitcher. Right-hander Jason Grilly. His 33rd game, one and two record. Right-hander coming on. He's pitched nine and two thirds innings since being in Toronto. They got him from Atlanta. Breaking ball. And Lindor finds himself in the hole 0 2. Slider fastball, both of them in the zone. Up and in, boy, that got his attention. Yeah, he backed him away. I was just watching. Uh, before that pitch Donaldson moved over about two or three steps toward the third baseline after he went 0 and 2 on him so I figure they may try and get him out of way unless that that was a, certainly a purpose pitch. Not a play. A one two up and away in terms of run differential the Indians third best inning this year has been the eighth they've outscored their opponents forty one to twenty seven well, and it's usually part of the part of the game where they score seventh eighth and ninth or they have been. The only bigger run differential innings for the tribe this year is the second in which they've outscored their opponents by 18 runs and the fifth they've outscored them by 26 runs. But the eighth inning you think about the eighth inning, that's a pretty wide margin to be up plus 14. Yes it is late a lot of times you're getting some pretty good relievers at that point in the ball game. And Lindor pulls it on the ground to second base, and that'll be an easy out one away. We're swinging into summer tomorrow afternoon here in Canada. Indians Blue Jays continue the four game series. Our coverage begins on Saturday afternoon at 1230 with Indians live first pitch followed at one right here on Sports Time Ohio or you can stream it live on Fox Sports Go Swing into Summer presented by Miller Lite. They're anticipating big crowds Saturday and Sunday. Today's game definitely appears to be a sellout there, all the way to the roof. Unfortunately, rainy conditions this afternoon have forced the roof to be closed. That will not or should not be the case tomorrow. That's sort of the nice thing about it. Even though it is raining here, you don't have any delays or right. anything, and the people can stay dry and enjoy it. It's a nice thing about having a dome when you're up here in Toronto. Well, 
over at old exhibition stadium where they used to play on the lake my friend there was a lot of time delay <laughs> and a lot of storms off the lake. A 1 1 pitch. Happily takes a strike. You got that slider going away. It starts and sort of locked him up. You see, he couldn't pull the trigger. Don't know if he picked it up real well. One out in the eighth. And the 2 2 to Napoli. He struck him up. Third time Napoli's down on strikes today, two away in the inning. Comes back and he gets this slider away. Makes a good pitch and gets Nap to chase after it again. So out number two here in the eighth inning. Jose Ramirez fouls it right back. Jason Grilly will turn 40 after the season ends. He has had quite a career and well traveled. Made his major league debut with the Marlins back in 2000. He's also pitched with the White Sox, the Tigers, the Rockies, the Rangers, the Pirates, the Angels, <laughs> and the Braves. A few bag tags for you right there. Here yeah. he is grunting on every pitch he throws. Maybe a little tougher being 40. Swung on and miss. He struck him out. Middle of the eighth, still deadlocked at one.
for Toronto. Three, four, and five hitters do up. It's Devon Travis, Michael Saunders, and Russell Martin. Travis one for two. He came into the game after Edwin Encarnacion was ejected following his first at bat. He jammed him so hard he broke his bat. He'll have to go get another. Well, this game up for grabs as the Indians try to run their win streak to 14 in a row, which would be a new franchise record. Toronto is trying to keep pace in a very competitive AL East, in which five and a half games separates Toronto, Boston, and Baltimore. Just threw his bat at it. Right field. Lonnie is there. One away. And that's going to bring up Michael Saunders, and it's going to bring out Terry Francona. Going to get a pitching change. As we'll see, left-hander Tom Gorzolani coming on to face the lefty Saunders when we come back to Toronto after this. definitely did that except the crowd was kind of fired up because of the strike zone and the umpire and all the shenanigans that we had early in the game but he did his job the Indians did nothing with uh, Stroman except for the back to back hits by Santana and Kipnis that got on their only run yeah and Tomlin handled the uh, two three four hitters very well Tom Gorzolani coming on to face Michael Saunders the lefty lefty matchup here Sixth appearance as a member of the Indians ball club. Gorzolani grew up in Orland Park, Illinois, which is White Sox country. He said, All my friends were White Sox fans. Everybody I knew loved the White Sox. So he said, I was a White Sox fan. And then they drafted him right out of high school, but it was in the 38th round. Still had to be a tough decision to say no when it's yeah. the team you've grown up rooting for and cheering That's for true. when they drafted. But he passed, ended up at the junior college 
near his uh, hometown. The same school where Kirby Puckett went to junior college, Triton Juco. And then the Pirates made him a second round pick in 03. And his pro career began from there. The 1 1 to Saunders. He wanted that one, didn't get it. Ball took off on him, and now he's behind him. Three balls in the strike, and this, I would imagine, is the only hitter. Gorzolani's in the face. I think you're right. Manship is up getting loose. Martin's the on deck hitter. You got a couple of right handers coming up next. So his job is the, the left hander right here. He got him a swing and a full count. I, I just think that's got to be one of the more difficult jobs in baseball when you come in knowing you're going to face one hitter. So you got about five pitches. You better be able to throw them where you want to. They have to be strikes. And the payoff. Bullseye got him looking. Yeah. Oh, what a job by Gorzolani to come from behind. And strike him out two down. Saunders uh, knew it too. He walked back. He knew it was a fastball. He had to be sitting slider. He started with that uh, slider to get strike one. He fell behind him three one. He comes back and throws two straight strikes. And guess what? He matched up. He got his out. And he's done. Jeff Manship will be the next Indians pitcher, but a job well done by the lefty Gorzolani as we go to break here in Toronto. We are in the eighth inning. 1 1 ball game. Russell Martin is the batter. And the Indians go to right hander Jeff Manship for the matchup here. 25th appearance on the year. Martin 1 for 3 with a single. Takes ball 1 down low. Martin's had a tough day with home plate umpire Vic Carapaza. Yeah, especially after he was struck out his last time up. And it's one on one. Jeff Manship out of San Antonio, Texas. He pitched so well in high school that. That earned him a scholarship to Notre Dame. <laughs> and he passed up a chance to be drafted out of high school. Went to Notre Dame and ended up a 14th round pick of the Twins in 06. Low and away, 2-2. Two two. Well, Martin was not happy with that pitch before. 
And he was down. I thought he might chase that one. He didn't, though. Three balls, two strikes. Swing and he went fishing for it, and the inning is over. Three pitchers combined for three outs, and we go to the ninth in Toronto, tied in one. This feels like a big old holiday. I mean, this place is packed. People are excited. They're having fun. And it's been a well pitched game on both sides. I mean, you have to really give credit to Marcus Stroman, who has struggled this year, but he came in and threw the ball exceptionally well. Indians didn't uh, manage a whole bunch against them, but they got one run on the board. And Josh Tomlin was Josh Tomlin. He only gave up one run on a solo homer. That's usually how you stop streaks. You have to shut them out. Well, they couldn't shut them out because the Indians scored first. But they've been able to just keep the Jays to one run today, too. That was a, a really good ball game today. Zoom on the season 36 time. 15 out of 17 save opportunities. A 252 ERA. 45 strikeouts in his 35 and two thirds innings. A great arm. Down on the dirt. Two balls and a strike. You see that one 95 and it was about belt high. Tough to catch up to. You'd like to make him try to get that ball down, but that's a he has a great arm. He can get it up in mid to upper 90s. Ground ball foul by Lonnie. He come back with a change up there at 81. Whatever that pitch was. Roberto Osuna is just 21 years old. He was pitching in the Mexican League for Diablos Rojos at the age of 15. And there's a base hit in the left field by Lonnie Chisinau, his second straight hit in the game. And both hits have let off an inning. 
They weren't able to do anything with it in the seventh. Hopefully they can do something here in the ninth. Both hits fastballs away. That one was down a little bit more. The one he threw before he fouled off over to third base dugout was up. That one down a little bit more. Lonnie stayed on it and both hits gone the other way on fastball. So he let off the seventh and now here in the ninth and we'll see if uh, Gomes can move him along. Last time after that base hit, he flew out to right field. It's a fly ball to center field. Back goes Pilar. Plenty of room. Makes the catch. One away. Gomes 0 for 4. And up comes Tyler Naquin. Naquin one out of three on the afternoon. Last year, um, Roberto Osuna made his major league debut on April the 8th. He struck out the only two batters he faced, leaving the bases loaded. So think about that. They brought him into a bases loaded situation at 20 years old. And that made him the youngest Blue Jay to ever pitch in a major league game. You know, high expectations for him, that's for sure. You know, he's probably averaged a home plate. Don't know if they would take a chance here and try and steal a base. Martin has not been, he was very good last year at throwing out base runners. He has not been the same this year. And that uh, 1.3 or a little over is on his fastball. Popped him up. Barney, the second baseman, makes the catch. Two down. <laughs> and that's going to bring up Rajay Davis. Rajay Davis is 0 for 3. Side. Osuna ready. The 1 1 to Davis is popped back out of play. Lost the bat. Went flying out of his hands back to the backstop. Last year, when Roberto Osuna picked up his 20th save of the season, he became only the second pitcher to get 20 saves at the age of 20 or younger. Terry Forster back in 1972 when the White Sox did it. Yeah, okay. I remember Terry Forster a long time ago. The young man. The blessed arm. Now the one-two. Runner goes and a swing and a miss. That'll do it. Well, the Indians get a leadoff single and cannot capitalize. Bottom of the ninth coming up.
as we go to the bottom of the ninth Jeff Manship will face Troy Tulowitzki Justin Smoke and Kevin Pillar. Popped him up on the first pitch. And Naquin makes the catch in center field one down. Actually, Naquin slipped on his break coming in on that ball and went down and had to regroup before he came in to catch it. Justin Smoke. He's the reason this game is tied. A two out opposite field solo homer in the sixth. It was a fastball away. Just didn't quite get it enough away. Right back to the screen one on one. Justin Smoke born in Goose Creek South Carolina Goose Creek played for the Gamecocks in college and it was the number one pick of the Rangers in 08. But surprisingly after we saw him initially traded to the Seattle Mariners. I say surprisingly because you see a good young hitter you think why would you trade him but boy Texas it seems like they spit him out one after another yeah. down there. Wasn't he in the Lee trade. Justin Smoke. He was, yeah. Yeah, he was part of that Cliff Lee trade. Never panned out. I mean, he has potential, a power. He was a switch hitting first baseman, and he was going to throw the bat and take the walk to first base, but not too soon. Something that has been called all day long the high strike and you can see Toronto just hasn't made an adjustment to it. Not that they want to swing it or they have to but you got to wait and make sure. Yeah, the payoff pitch is swung out and missed. Oh man. I'll tell you what Vic Carabaza has shown quite a bit of restraint today. It well there you go down with that slider you, you, you went with the high fastball away and then come back with that slider and I know what you're talking about because he's taken a lot of abuse even though they're walking back to the dugout he's heard it all day long from Toronto. And I mean the same pitches there's pitches that have been called for the Indians as well. We haven't seen anything. Now low. Kevin Pollard had a base hit back in the fifth inning. Rounds this one to short. Lindor throws it out, and we've got extra innings on Canada Day in Toronto.
Extra innings are presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Feed your wild side. We go to the 10th inning. And for Cleveland, it will be the top of the order. For Toronto, it will be the fifth pitcher of the afternoon. And it's right hander Joe Biagini. Well, you're looking at extra innings. The Indians, they are three and three on the year in extra innings, and the Blue Jays, three and five. So they're getting some free baseball here on Canada Day. Biagini, 26 years old. And the rookie right hander set to face Santana. Right down Broadway, strike one. Three on the right side as the Donaldson breaks back now and goes back to shortstop. Biagini was a 26th round pick by the Giants out of UC Davis. And this past off season, the Blue Jays made him a rule five selection and snapped him up. But as a rule five player, you've got to stick. You've got to be on the big league club. And I suppose Toronto felt like, you know, at age 25, he's soon to be 26. He turned 26 end of May. They thought it was worth a roll of the dice. Out of play. He would already spent four years in the minors and you know for the Giants you can't protect everybody in your organization. True. That's a pitching rich organization so they probably figured. They had more important arms they had to protect. Down low two and two. The big guy at six five two thirty eight. Been a starter his whole career until now. You know, so often you see bullpen guys and it's fastball slider. It's, you know, one, yeah. two pitches max. And he's got the full arsenal because he's been a starter. Yeah, but you'll do whatever you want to do, whatever you can do to, to stay at the big league level. It doesn't matter, start. Give me a job in the pen. He's got to make a pitch here, though. Santana lifts the lazy fly to left. One down. Only run of the game came in the third inning when Santana got into an off speed pitch and hammered it to straightaway center for a double. And then Jason Kipnis, next man up, brought him home with a base hit right up the gut. Back to back hits. The only run of this game for Cleveland. They only have two hits in the game since the back to back hits in that third inning. And both hits. One leadoff singles by Lonnie Chisholm, one in the seventh, one in the ninth. This has the feeling of one of those games where it's going to be one swing of the bat. Neither team has really been able to string anything together. Well, it's going to come on a mistake, too, because you have a wide strike zone. So if a pitcher makes a mistake and one guy gets one, you may be right. It's been tough to put hits together. Both teams between the two up. We're into the tenth. They have 13 hits. He hit in with six. I guess it did. Kipnis yelled and told him it got me, and it just barely got him. It nicked him. Well, let's listen to this. Yeah, you can hear it. Boy, that, that's hard to see. Just Barely. glanced off the elbow. All right, there's your base runner. Hit by pitch. And Francisco Lindor will be the batter. He's one for four on the afternoon.
Runner goes. And it's fouled back. And well, he had, a, he had a nice jump. But, uh, Lindor liked the uh, the pitch, so he went after it. It's not that, uh, you know, it was a hit and run or anything like that. Kipnis saying, I got to go. Heads down. He doesn't even look back. So he's trying to steal that base. He did hear the ball go out. Even though when you're stealing bases like that, it, it's good to peek in that when you hear the ball hit to see if it goes anywhere or where it goes. Struck him out. Two down. Went down and got Frankie with a curveball here, down and in, get him to swing over the top of it. So two outs now for Napoli. Who's 0 for 4, and he's struck out his last three times. Smashes it right back up the middle. Kitten is going to hit second. He'll hold there. And the Indians have two on with two out now as Napoli collects his first hit of the afternoon. They want it down and away, and that pitch just stayed right there. And Napoli drives it right back up the middle. Almost gets a piece of them. Seventh hit for the Indians now. Runners at first and second. Two outs. It'll give their best RBI man an opportunity. Here in the tenth, Jose Ramirez. And with two outs, which is where he has specialized this year. He's got 13 hits and 32 at bats with a runner in scoring position and two outs this year. Go two outs, runners in scoring position. 406, 17 ribbies. You got the right man in the right spot. See if he can come through. The outfield shades him a bit toward left. Out of play, it's two and one. Last night, Jose Ramirez was two for four with a double and a run batted in. And that's back into the seats. A couple good pitches, and he fouled them back. So he gets uh, back into the count here. Crowd getting into it. They're getting it on their feet. Base hit would really quiet him down right about now. And the 2 2 to left field. Pilar on the run. Dives and makes a spectacular catch to save the game for Toronto. Keeps it tied at one and sends us to the bottom of the tenth with an all out diving effort.
made a fantastic play to save this game for Toronto. Looked like Ramirez might have blooped one in here. Tell you what, that was a fine running catch, man. He saved the day for him. I thought it was down. Ramirez did just what he had to do, but a great play. Keeps him alive and keeps the game tied. Nice play by Pilar. You see who's sitting next to him on the bench? Pitcher. Well, and if he's not shading him over there toward left center, yeah, he didn't have right. a chance of making that play. That's right. He had a good jump on it, too. Well, the Indians will now turn to Brian Shaw. Shaw with a strike to Darwin Barney. Tried to pull it. Ramirez charges and throws it off one away. When Brian Shaw was in college, he was a closer at Long Beach State. But when the Diamondbacks drafted him in the second round back in 08, they tried him out as a starter. Started 19 games in 09, 13 games the following year. Not that he pitched poorly. His ERA was fine. It was 470 in 09, 426 in 2010. But as time went along, they realized his best value was as a bullpen guy. Two quick outs. Two quick outs, but now it's Josh Donaldson coming to the plate. Well, he'll have one thing in mind. Send this crowd home happy. Last year, Brian Shaw threw his cutter 76% of the time. At times this year, it seems like it's more like 96% well, of the time. I, well, we always talk about it. It seems like he can't throw it straight. He's a, he's a left-hander and a right-hander's body. Yeah, it's a good point. You know, his the ball just it, it runs all over the place. I like that analogy. He's got a good slider when he throws it, but sometimes you can't tell. Was that a slider or was that just a wild cutter? Line to right. Chisenhall makes a running catch. And Brian Shaw shuts him down. One, two, three. And we'll go to the 11th. Still tied at one.
Jack Links feed your wild side. A packed house on Canada Day here in Toronto. And bonus baseball. As we go to the 11th inning. New pitcher is Jesse Chavez. His 31st appearance on the year, and he's got six, seven, and eight in the Indians lineup here. Lonnie Chisholm, Jan Gomes, Tyler Naquin. First ball swinging, fouled back. Well, the last uh, two times that Chisnall has hit, he's been leading off the seventh and the ninth, got base hits to start the innings off. Both of them going to left field on fastballs away. Foul back again. He's trying to put everything in play here at the start. Up and away. Going away again. Got the outside corner cover. Want it up. Let's go upstairs. Checked and it's fouled. Time he laid off. I think that's the first pitch he has a swung at in the at bat. Yeah, well, it gets him uh, back into the count at two and two. They've got him to two strikes and they're trying to get him to swing at that ball up in the zone. Now they're going back away. And he struck him out and then he stayed upstairs and that's what got him. A high fastball. Watch where Martin sets up away. Down and away, and guess what? He doesn't get it there, but he elevates it. And that's where he wanted it at the pitch before. But he gets his first strikeout and out number one in the inning. Funny how sometimes you can miss and it's a good thing. Sure it is. Now here's Jan Gomes. He's 0 for 4. Has flied out his last two times up. Off the dish. It was a year ago in this building in which uh, Jan Gomes had a two home run game. Pops this one out of play to the right. Was that the game where it did, didn't he tie the game twice with home runs from the seventh? It was late on? in the game, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it was. To, I, and I know it went to right field. One of them. That one goes to the backstop, two and two. Pulled it. And Tulowitzki throws it out. Still has a fantastic arm and he's a big guy. Well he, he's always on the run when he's throwing and he's very accurate for, for a guy that's always moving. He throws it from all different arm angles man. 
but he's pretty darn accurate to get it across. And right there, Gomes didn't hit first base. So even if he pulled him off the base, he never touched it going by. Two down for Tyler Naquin. Naquin, one for four here this afternoon. Naquin with a long drive to deep right field. Carrera back. He's got room, and he'll make the catch right on the front edge of the warning track to end the inning. And that sends us to the bottom of the 11. Still deadlocked at one. It's a holiday here in Canada. Their Independence Day. Yeah, but uh, Indians have kept them with their hands on their seats all day long because it's been a close ball game. Drive out a one nothing lead. Blue Jays tied it in the sixth with a solo homer, and it's been that way ever since. And now Zach McAllister is the sixth Indians pitcher to work here this afternoon. Yeah, you get in this ballpark and you're going to play, uh, you're into the 10th or 11th inning, you're figuring it's going to be three, four, five runs, not a 1 1 game in this park. Devon Travis, one for three to lead it off. And McAllister misses, low and away ball one. McAllister in his last seven games has struck out seven batters. He's walked a couple. He's given up one run. That covers seven and two thirds innings. Now the last time we noticed Zach, though, he, he has scrapped the full windup. <laughs> Gone to that abbreviated windup. Yes. You know where he's in the set position and then that little step back and let's go a little momentum let's go to the plate. Just missed away three to one. Interesting only in that if Vic Carapaz has been consistent today, it's been that he's called a pitch, maybe a ball off the plate or two all day long. But those last two pitches were very close. But all the ball both times. And so Toronto has the winning run aboard to start the inning. And that is only the second 
walk that wasn't an intentional walk allowed today. Josh Tomlin intentionally walked Josh Donaldson back in the fifth. The only other actual walk today came against Troy Tulowitzki in that same inning. Or actually, it was the inning before back in the fourth. Michael Saunders. Threw it by him. That's interesting. That's strength against strength. You figure the left hander likes the ball down and in. And Callister at 95 threw it down in there. Able to get it by him. Free shift to the right side of the infield for Cleveland and Saunders went fishing away and strike out. Well, nice pitch by McAllister there. It's a swing and a miss. Ball's going to run away. Watch the movement. Fastball going to take off. Excellent pitch. Strikeout number 13 for Indians pitching today after they struck out 17 Blue Jays last night. And Russell Martin, who is fanned three times on the afternoon, steps in. Out of play. Can't have that many pitches. He shook them off five times. <laughs> well, sometimes you get the, you may be shaking on location. Sure. If you want to locate it, then it ends up turning into a fastball, I would think. Boom. Paints the outside part of the plate with a fastball, and it's 0-2. Well, he's getting a feel now. He came up and pulled the first couple of pitches in the inning. And after he walked Travis on a close pitch, he's starting to get a feel for it now. The 0 2. Coming back our way, just shy of our perch behind home plate. Last night we had just over 41,000 for the series opener. The capacity for baseball here at the Rogers Center is 49,282, and we haven't heard the attendance yet, but it's got to be right around there. I would think so. They said it was sold out before we came into the building today. 45,825, I'm told. The 0 2 in the dirt. Oh, nice block. Nice block to keep it out in front. See, when you're on first base, you have to really anticipate some of these things. But Gomes did such a good job to keep it out in front. He deadened that ball. That's where base runners have to really concentrate on taking that extra base if they can. He couldn't on that one, but. The one two. Popped him up. Shallow right, Lonnie Chisenhall is in, and there are two down. And up comes Troy Tulowitzki. Fastball. 
Zach McAllister was a third round pick of the Yankees back in 06. Grew up in Illinois. His dad was a scout at one time for the Red Sox. Back out of play. Indians picked up McAllister in the Austin Kearns trade. That was in August. That was after the trading deadline in 2010. Mixed results as a starter with the tribe. The move to the bullpen has been fruitful for McAllister. Three years ago, he was nine and nine with a 3.75 ERA as a starter. Well, ended up going back to that bullpen because he couldn't. Uh, the secondary pitches didn't yeah. have it to go through the lineup two or three times. Oh boy. That's a step off. He took off. Yeah, I don't know if it was Gomes or Napoli. Somebody had to say something to McAllister because he. Yeah, but sometimes that'll shake you up as a pitcher. See, he, he doesn't see him, and he was wanting to go. And as a base runner, boy, that's. Well, he took his time. He held on and just stepped off. And the one two pitch fouled right back. Hits are even at seven apiece. Indians have left ten. Blue Jays have stranded seven. We're in the bottom of the eleventh with two down. And the one two pitch is popped up foul and out of play. Indians scored first in the third inning. A double by Santana, a single by Kipnis brought him home with the game's first run. It stayed that way until the six with two outs when Justin Smoke homered to tie the game at one. And it's been that way ever since. Indians bullpen had retired 13 in a row before the walk by McAllister to Devon Travis here in the 11th inning. But Zach has bounced back quickly, struck out Saunders, got Martin to pop up to right field, and now has to Lewitsky down the count, one and two. Travis takes off, and it's a little bit outside. Two balls, two strikes. Well, he knew right there that. You get another close pitch away here on to Lewitsky, but I'm talking about Travis on first base. He's, he wanted to go. And he held there, and McAllister just came set and just held it for a while, but he waited him out. It's just interesting, as, as wide as the strike zone has appeared to be at times, there have been a couple of very razor close pitches that have not been called strikes in this 11th inning. That one could have been the biggest pitch of all, especially if Tula Whiskey takes advantage now. And the 2 2. Up and in, all the way to the backstop. And Travis goes to third. And now the winning run is 90 feet away for Toronto with two down. Well, they want that away, and this one goes up and in, and Gomes can't hold on to it. It'll be a wild pitch by McAllister. And the man goes to third. Full count now on Tulowitzki. Well, you've got the base open, so you got to you got to make your pitch and make him. Oh yes, hit it, no question. 
He takes the walk. Second walk in the inning. Out comes Mickey Calloway as the infield convenes on the pitcher's mound. The batter will be Justin Smoke. Justin Smoke. Strike one called. Did you see Travis coming down the line? He was at least a third of the way down the line to try and. Two for nine in his career against McAllister, but trying to intimidate McAllister on the mound. A little bit inside, and it's one on one. Price Tulowitzki staying at first base. We got Napoli way behind him. Why don't go? There will be no force out. I would assume that's what they're telling him down there at first base, too. But he holds. And it's a strike over the inside nice corner. pitch. That's where you, it seems like Tomlin, if you remember back in the first inning against this guy, he went in there a couple of times on smoke, and he just can't. He looks out over the plate, and that pitch on the inside corner, he just can't hit it. And that home run he hit was on a fastball out on the outer edge. Now the one-two. Spun him out of there. Oh, was that a setup pitch to go away here? Or a pitch that he just didn't hit his location no, with? He didn't hit his location with it. He wanted to go right back in with the same pitch and tried to overthrow it a little bit. In my opinion. See what he comes with here on the 2 2. And the fastball way out of the zone. And now a full count. Get to the, the two strikes, then he's, he's just trying to overthrow a little too much. Hit your spots. Well, he's been able to get the crowd back into this one. Tulowitzki will be off at first. The payoff pitch is popped up straight up. Gomes ditches the mask. Ramirez charges in, calls for it. Jose makes the catch, and we'll go to the 12th in Toronto. Still tied at one.
Rajay Davis, Carlos Santana, and Jason Kipnis do up. Jesse Chavez, who pitched a scoreless 11th, will come on, will stay on to pitch the 12th. Toronto has only two left in its bullpen Drew Storen and Bo Schultz. He waves at a ball way out of the zone, 0 2. Now, like you said, the Indians you're looking at is ever since they scored back in the third inning. They only have three singles. The rest of this game, we're into the 12th. And Rajay ropes one foul. Well, and, and on the other side, Rick, Toronto, since their home run tied it from smoke, they don't they have don't, a hit. Right. That's true. Both teams with seven hits. The Indians have left 10. Toronto has left nine. A little bit outside, one and two. Boy, but this is the guy you'd like to see get on the way he can run, at least to lead off the inning. Rajay led off the fifth and grounded out. Nice play was made by the second baseman, Barney. Otherwise, that could have been a game changer. To Lewitsky. Throws him out. Run away. Well, the Indians bullpen retired 13 in a row going into the 11th inning. Yeah, Garzalani came out for one out, and then in came Manship for an inning in the third, and he did his job. McAllister, a couple of walks, but got out of it. So guys that have not been used a whole lot throughout the stretch of this uh, winning streak are the big part of it now. But they feel like they're contributing now, that's for sure, as Absolutely. they try to keep it alive. Carlos Santana was following Russell Martin in the Dodgers organization at one time. When Martin became the, the young hotshot catcher in L.A., Santana was climbing the ranks in the minor leagues. Low three balls and a strike. Swing at ball four. Well, that's the thing now. You're, you're getting to the point. It seems like everyone wants to try and end it with one swing, but you're in a hitter's count. You still can't lose your discipline and perspective here. That's ball four. You could have been on first base. Two down. Well, check it out. It's a fastball away. There it is. Good pitch. Swung at the ball and took the strike. And with two down, Jason Kipnis to the plate. Chavez has retired all five that he has faced. So much for the bullpen being a weakness for this Toronto club. Well, <laughs> everything they told me, it's been the opposite. <laughs> Stroman sinkers flat. He's been unbelievable. The bullpen hasn't been any good. Uh, it is pretty good. Now 
Now the 2 1. Low out of the zone. Three balls and a strike. He got him to swing at a bad pitch. Pops it up. And the inning is over. Indians go in order. We move to the bottom of the 12th. Still tied in one. Bottom half. And Tommy Hunter is the newest Indians pitcher. He is the seventh Indians pitcher to work here this afternoon. The only guys left in the bullpen are Jabba Chamberlain and Cody Allen. But Cody's pitched in three straight games, so. Yeah, he's done. He will not be available here today. They've moved Trevor Bauer out to the bullpen as a just in case guy. Kevin Pillar to lead off. And Tommy Hunter misses up high ball one. And that one with 96. A little giddy up behind it. Threw it by him. For the Indians, one run, seven hits, no errors, ten left. For Toronto, one run, seven hits, two errors, nine stranded. This is the seventh Indians pitcher today. Popped up to center. Naquin coming in. One away. Josh Tomlin started this game for the Tribe and struck out four of the first five hitters to start the contest. Well we found out from the very first inning it was going to be a wide strike zone and Tomlin just did his carving like he normally does. Struck out seven he ended up walking two. Which is unheard of one was intentional. But the only blemish on his card today was a solo home run with two outs in the sixth inning that tied this game up at one. Out of play. And did a nice job in that uh, fourth and fifth innings of getting out of it, leaving the bases loaded the first time with two outs, the next time uh, in the fifth with one out. And it seems like a long time ago he was in this ball game. Line to short right at Lindor, two away.
Tomlin dropped his ERA from 3.32 to 3.21 today. And Ezekiel Carrera takes a strike. Carrera 0 for 4 with a sacrifice bunt. Fastball took off on him. Hit hard, but foul down the right side. You know, when you think about it, this Indians pitching in the first two games of this series, this has been it was a Blue Jay club that were they were scoring some runs. He's going to drill this one, but it's foul. You know, since uh, the 11th of June, they were averaging s over six, six and a half runs a ball game, and hit 36 homers. But you're coming into their place, which is a good hitters' park. They scored one yesterday. They have one today. We're in the 12th inning. So it's been a great job by the pitching for the Indians. Slowly chopped up the middle indoor. Fires the first. And the Blue Jays go one, two, three. We head on to the 13th inning. Still tied at one. A battle of bullpens since both starters left in and around the seventh inning today. And there you get a look at what the Indians have done. Six no hit innings with a couple of walks, five Ks, and the Blue Jays have been yeah. just as good. They've only allowed two base runners. Well, that's going to decide this ball game and the bullpens. Storen's up in their bullpen. This is the third inning of relief for Chavez. Francisco Lindor. One for five on the afternoon. Lindor singled with two outs in the first inning. Since then, he has struck out twice, flat out, grounded out. You keep playing, they're going to have to hold the fireworks that's down on the lakefront tonight. <laughs> they're going to have to wait till everybody gets out of here. Some of the Blue Jay faithful have already called it a day and moved on to other holiday festivities. But many still remain. Well, they want to see the outcome. Out of play. Mm -hmm. 
Lindor lazy bouncer towards second. Long. And then we'll bring up Mike Napoli. Napoli, one for five. Had a two out single in the tenth. That two one. Out of play. Two balls, two strikes. The count on Napoli is Chavez delivers and he pops him up. Roof scraper to Lewitsky. Two down. Well, that's going to bring up Jose Ramirez. Side. Ramirez 0 for 5. He had the best chance of anybody really to win this game back in the 10th inning. Would have given the Indians the lead. He had a line drive to left center field, and Pilar made a fantastic diving catch. To center. Pilar, plenty of room. One, two, three, go the Indians. Bottom of the 13th, coming up next.
witnessed a stalemate into the bottom of the 13th. And Josh Donaldson will lead it off against Tommy Hunter. Fastball right down the heart of the plate, but at 96, Donaldson can only foul it back. He has struck out, grounded out, slide out twice. They did walk him. Tomlin intentionally put him aboard to load the bases back in the fifth inning. Then he struck out Travis and Saunders flied out to end the inning. Hit him. Well, he's certainly not looking for anything inside like that. That ball came up and Eddie, uh, Eddie wears that padding there for a reason, but I don't know if it got the pads or not. That looked yeah, like it was up on the, the shoulder. shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. So their leadoff man aboard. And now Devon Travis, who walked. His last time up. Now, well, just to keep an eye on him, Donaldson not a base stealer, but he has five stolen bases in five attempts. So you got to pay attention to him. The only other time today that the Blue Jays went for the sacrifice bunt to try to score a run was in the fifth. They bunted runners to second and third. But then that's when they just walked Donaldson. Yeah, they, they retired took the next two batters. Right. Now the 1 1. Tossed to first instead. No, they don't. <laughs> no, you're supposed to take a lot of time and deliver it to home plate and let them steal. Java Chamberlain is up in the Cleveland bullpen. Fouled right back. Boy, for a guy that didn't start a game, Travis, he was in after. The ejection of Encarnacion. It's the fifth time he's been up to the plate today. The one two. Weekly tap to short Lindor to kick this. There's one on the first. Dug out nicely on the other end by Napoli, but not in time to get Travis. And so there's one away. It just wasn't hit hard enough. There's the underhanded flip. Come across the bag and nice pick by Napoli, but Travis was already past the bag. They were, uh, Tito was holding them off. He wanted to get a look at it on replay, and then they decided, no, no, thank you. He was buying. Well, one on one out, Michael Saunders. The batter, and he has fanned three times today, three times yesterday. So he's 0 for 9 with six punch outs already in the series. And he swings through a high fastball.
swung through another high heater and it's 0 and 2. That time he got to it but fouled off. Again, Tommy Hunter's two strike pitch. Strike three Good calls. Pitch. Nice pitch. Inside, so he goes down for the fourth time tonight. Look at that fastball inside part of the plate. Saunders, no luck today. Two down for Russell Martin. He has struck out three times. Inside for ball one. Right back. The winning run at first with two down in the last half of the thirteenth inning. And a breaking ball over the outside corner. I mean, I can't get over what Carapaza has allowed the Blue Jay hitters to get away with here today. I mean, I know he ran Encarnacion and the manager Gibbons in the first inning, but since then, on a lot of verbal barking and abusive language his way, and he's let it all go. Because you and I both know we've seen umpires who in the past they'd have run about a half a dozen guys yeah, by now. Uh, I agree. I, you're, you're right. He's put up with a lot and he has called a lot. Runner goes on the one two pitch. He went says first base umpire DJ Rayburn and the inning is over. This Indians bullpen has authored seven no hit innings and now Russell Martin's just been ejected from the game. As he was headed back to the dugout Martin said something and he got the heave ho from Carapaza a man can only take so much and now Martin has just gone ballistic. DeMarlo Hale had their hands full trying to keep Martin from getting himself into a lot of hot water. I'll tell you what, his, his checkbook's going to be a little lighter to come next week.
numbers are dwindling. Boy, they sure are. New pitchers, <laughs> Drew Storm. They, they've got one relief pitcher left in their bullpen. They could probably, like the Indians, send a starter down there to, if needed. But right now it's Drew Storm. After Jesse Chavez did a great job, gave him three yeah. innings of uh, perfect relief, nine up, nine down. Yes, he did a really nice job with a couple of strikeouts. Tolley goes in behind the plate after the ejection of Martin. And Lonnie Chisenhall who has two hits. Will lead it off. Lonnie Chisnall blooping one in the right center field. It's going to drop for a base hit. And he's got his third knock of the afternoon. We profiled him in the open of our telecast because he's been on fire here of late. Well, that's the third time he's let off an inning with a hit. And now we're going to finally get a pinch hitter to see if they can do something here. Michael Martinez coming on to hit for Gomes. Is 0 for 5. So Chisholm Hall gets his third hit. They have their leadoff man aboard, and I would think here Martin is up to bunt. Squares and it's ball one up high. He squares, he bunts, foul. Make up your mind, you're up there to bunt. Don't trick him. Get the ball down. Michael Martinez will square on the 1 1 pitch. And again, he doesn't get it down. It appears to be the one, one thing he has trouble with. He's done everything else really well this year. Well, that's something he better work on then, because if you're going to get used and get in a situation like this for the bunt, you better learn how to get it down. Let's see what he does here. Does he still try to bunt with two strikes or? We only try to just get a base hit now. Down low, two and two. It's the third time today that Lonnie Chisnall has let off an inning with a base hit. He advanced as far as third base in the seventh inning when they loaded him up with two outs. But in the ninth, when he let off with a single, he never left first. Now he's let off here in the 14th. What will unfold next? The 2 2. Fouls it off. I don't know if it's like self motivation but so often you see a guy not able to get the bunt down and then he ends up getting yeah, a hit. Yeah that's that sometimes that happens because that that's what it is. I better get my job done or I could be in trouble. Yeah. 
Up and away, full count. Okay, full count. Let's see if he starts chiseling all at first base. There he goes. And Martinez rolls one towards second. Okay. One away. Lonnie in the scoring position. Well, this is the way the game began. Third hitter of the game was Edwin Encarnacion. He threw his bat down, and that was okay. But whatever he said after that was not okay. Then he bumped the umpire, and John Gibbons got the heave ho. And this is after a day full of arguing. Martin finally had enough, and he couldn't take it anymore on that 3 2 slider. He gets thrown, and then he goes ballistic. I mean, he absolutely lost his mind right there. There's Tyler Naquin. One hit this afternoon. And I'm just speculating, Rick, but I'm thinking Russell Martin may have really gone crazy because he was unhappy with some of the calls. Not the, not the check swing that rung him up, just some of the calls in the at-bat. And he was just beefing a little bit. And when Carapaza rung him, I think he lost his mind because, look, I've been patient all day. I've been back here. I haven't been giving you a lot of grief. And it just boiled over at that point. Well, he was a, had, had a lot to say throughout the course of the day, and it just you're right. It culminated. Extra innings, it'll do it to you. Frustration, it'll do it to you. But look, the home plate umpire has put up with a lot. Yes, We've he heard has. it. I don't know if you at home have heard it. I hope you haven't, because some of it has not been pleasant to hear. But some of the field mics have picked up the things that have been said in his direction, and he's he's taken a lot of guff without overreacting and to that I give him a lot of credit another one one up and away Naquin a little jam job right back to the mound. Two down. So with two outs in the 14th inning, it will be the former Blue Jay, Rajay Davis, with a chance to give his new team, the Indians, the lead. Rajay 0 for 5 this afternoon. Looked like when he turned out of the way of that ball, something might have happened to him. I huh? the back of the leg. He just might have tightened up on him the way he twisted. Out of play, one and one. Lonnie Chisnall is at third base with two down. And a ground ball to short. To Lewitsky, scoops it, throws it, got him. And we'll go to the bottom of the 14th, still tied in one.
Well, back here at the Rogers Center, we play on. And in the bottom of the 14th, Java Chamberlain is the new Indians pitcher. And officially the final relief pitcher left in the Indians bullpen because Cody Allen not available today after pitching three days in a row. Chris Jimenez comes into the ballgame. He's the new catcher after the Indians pinch hit for Jan Gomes and the guy that pinch hit for Michael Martinez stays in the game in left field. So he'll bat seventh. Jimenez goes into Rajay Davis's spot in the order and he'll bat ninth. Java Chamberlain representing the eighth Indians pitcher to work here this afternoon. We have played one game longer than this. We remember it back down in Houston. No, I don't remember. You don't? <laughs> we did. It was getaway day. We played 16 innings. Here's Troy Tulowitzki. He is one for three with two walks. Spiked it in there, ball one. And it's outside 2 0. Tulowitzki, Justin Smoke, and Kevin Pillar for the Blue Jays here in the bottom of the 14th inning. And he couldn't stay patient. He chased one. It's 2 and 1. Now Jobber loves that slider, has a good one, and got Tula Whiskey to chase it out of the zone on a 2-0 count. Good thing. Even though we've just had the second seventh inning stretch, the game is just past the four-hour mark. The game was originally scheduled. For 107, but we were late getting underway with the pregame festivities on Canada Day. Now the 3 1 to Tulowitzki, and he socks it in the right center field. Chisinau cuts it off. But Toronto has their leadoff man aboard. That's the first hit off the bullpen, isn't it? It sure is. What a job. I mean, they, uh, that's the first hit that the Indian bullpen has given up. That ball leaked out over the plate a little bit. Tulowitzki stayed out. And Chisholm, a nice job of cutting it off, holding him to a single. Bullpen had authored seven no hit innings. Now, Justin Smoke. Outside ball one. Wow. That was a pretty good, well, good pitch. It was a good pitch, but look it. You don't get them when you're. When you don't throw it, you don't get it early. And he came out there and he's missed a couple times. That was a pretty good pitch. You're right, but he has to be a little more consistent just coming into the game. It's as if the tables have been turned. That time he got it. Call a strike. And that was on the plate.
Bouncing ball to Lindor. He turns, goes to Ramirez for one, back to first. Not in time. It was close, but they get the lead runner, one down. Now Lindor's going to get this and turn around and spin it and get it over to Ramirez, so they can't turn it. Just not hit hard enough. Smoke beats it out. We're going to get a pinch runner for him now. He will. Junior Lake will come on to run. And that leaves Ryan Goins, the only man left on the Toronto bench. Junior Lake does not have a stolen base or an attempt. He only played in four games. They just need some speed out there. I would don't know much about this guy if he can even steal some bases, but in case a ball's hitting the gap, you need somebody that can run a little bit better than what Smoke does. Out of play. I'm told he has 15 steals in 205 career games. So not a guy that you would think is a base stealer. No, not really. Handful of steals last uh, last year with Baltimore, none in eight games. But with Chicago in 21 games, he had four steals. Rounded to a short. Lindor to second. There's one. Kitten is on the first. This time he's called out. It's an inning ending double play for now. Well, let's see if they challenge it. They're waiting out there and waiting to see. And the I'm sure he, wants him, he wants him to take a look at it. He'll ask him to take another look. Yes, he will. Umpires will take a look. John Hirschbeck is the crew chief. He will come over and take a look. Well, there's the turn. And oh, he's safe, I think. Sure will look I like I think it he's from safe that from that angle. Yeah, he yeah. gets his foot down. I'm gonna say that's just gonna be a you can hear the crowd, they showed it up on the on the scoreboard. The Indians all saw it too, and they're walking back to their places on yeah, the field. They are. Yeah, they are. That was uh, what was that? Six four, and I think this one will be overturned, and it's quick too. Say yes. Yeah, we get we had a chance to see that one uh, right on our first view. So the Blue Jays challenge, and it is overturned, keeping the inning alive. Darwin Barney will be the batter. Strike call. Darwin Barney hails from Oregon. Born in Portland. Makes his home in Beaverton. He got the name Darwin because his his dad had an uncle who was Darwin, but that name was spelled with an O. And he said, my dad thought it looked funny, so spelled it with an I. He goes, it has nothing to do with Charles Darwin and evolution. I've been asked <laughs> that a million times. I'm thinking we will see Pilar here trying to take off. 
with two outs in a situation like this. He's stolen six out of nine. He's going to try and get a lead, and if he feels comfortable, he will be off and running. First. Didn't get away far enough for him to really get a, a good jump to take off. It actually hit him on the back. The 1 1. Hit hard. Fair. Down the line. Look out. Pilar in the third. He'll be held there. It's a double for Barney. And now the Blue Jays have runners at second and third with two down. That ball gets over the head of Ramirez at third state fair right down the line. And it's a good thing it hit the sidewall and it kicked out nicely to Martinez. If it goes down in the corner, you know they were going to send him. I don't know if he would have been able to cut it off or not, but it's the sidewall. They have to stop Pilar at third base. He's thinking scoring, man, as you do as a base runner, but he has to pull up at second and third now. Two outs. And the batter is Ezekiel Carrera. Yeah, back up to the top of the lineup. Still have to be aware of a bun here with this guy, even in this situation. That's why they were at the bag, even with the bag on the corners. He is 0 for 5 on the afternoon. Certainly don't want to walk this guy to get to the one that's on deck. That's what's waiting in the wings. The Indians 13 game win streak hanging by a thread now here in the 14th inning. With two on two out and the 2 0 pitch in there for a strike. Just a bit outside and a full count. Kevin Pillar is the winning run at third base. What's left of this crowd of 45,825 up and roaring here for Carrera. In the dirt, nicely blocked by Jimenez. The bases are now loaded. And Josh Donaldson to the plate.
Well, with a 3 2 slider, I think that is. Look at Jim and his what a job he does to keep it in front. That's the guy you wanted right there. Now you're flirting with disaster. It started with a leadoff single. Then a pair of fielder's choices. One nearly ended the inning. If not for instant replay, we'd still be moving on. We'd be in the 15th inning. But the Blue Jays challenged, overturned it. And then the walk, we got the bases loaded, and here's Josh Donaldson fouling it out of play. Donaldson is 0 for 4 this afternoon. He has intentionally walked in the fifth, hit by a pitch in the 13th. Another terrific block by Jimenez, and it's one and one. Boy, he's he knows if he calls that slider, that's that's what he's preparing himself for. You look for that ball, the worst possible area, and you make your adjustments. He's two and one. It's sooner or later he's going to well, have to go ahead. He's, he's thrown 24 pitches, 13 balls, 11 strikes. He doesn't. He, he's not aggressive. And this is the biggest strike zone you, that we've seen all year. So you got to be aggressive here. Now you're, you, you just did it to the wrong guy. The two one swung out and missed. This time he threw the slider. It was a little closer to the strike zone, and Donaldson well, he took went out after it. He took a little something off of it, too. He's been spiking a couple of sliders there. And Donaldson way out in front thinking he was getting the fastball. Might be in his head now. He's probably thinking the 2 2. Check swing. He was in his head. Oh, did he have him locked up? And the Blue Jays leave him loaded. We will play on. Java gets off the hook. We go to the 15th. Still tied at one. We play on 15th inning. 
Junior Lake stays in the ball game. He's now at first base after he pinch ran for smoke. And it will be the top of the order for Cleveland in this 15th inning. Santana Kipnis Lindor. Andrew Storen on for a second inning of relief work now. This is one of those games when you get to this point, it's a game that could have lasting effects for both teams because right. when you get on this turf, it takes a lot out of the body as opposed to regular grass. And now you're talking about guys who are out here for 14 into the 15th inning. Yeah, now. well, and you had a night a night game last night, turnaround today, you got another one tomorrow, so you, you when you play this long, you certainly want to be the winner in a game like this. Well, and to your point, Rick, how bad do you want to win the game? Trevor Bauer is scheduled to start tomorrow's game. He is now throwing in the Indians bullpen. He'll be coming on next. Whether it looks like whether they take the lead or not, Jabba, I don't think he's going back out there well, even if they take the lead. 26 pitches in, yeah. in his inning of work. In the dirt to Santana. Bo Schultz is the final reliever in the Toronto bullpen. He is up getting loose as we speak. Breaking ball down and in two and two. How's your scorecard looking by the way? I'm, I'm at the end. This is it. <laughs> if we go beyond 15 I got to get a new one. Just, just like that game in Houston. Just find some squares in there you can <laughs> put them in. High pop. Left field routine play here for Saunders. One down. Well, this sequence to Josh Donaldson, he took a good rip at the, the first pitch, and then he goes a slider away and misses. Two and one with two sliders. Took something off and got it to 2-2, two -two and a check swing there off the dish and the frustration. You can see Chamberlain's thrilled to death. He got out of that inning, but I think uh, Donaldson a little upset. He didn't even get a chance to swing the bat. It was a check swing. Now Jason Kipnis. One for five. He's been hit by a pitch today. Well, the Indians want to keep that streak going. They certainly will have to earn it today. A 1 1 ball game into the 15. Way outside. Down and in, it's 3 and 0. Oh. <laughs> that finds the zone and it's 3 and 1. Ball four. The Indians have a base runner here in the 15th. And it will bring up Francisco Lindor. The one thing in baseball is it's, it's never fail, it's never fair to heap too much blame or give too much credit to any one player in a lineup because it is a group and it all works together. And certainly Francisco Lindor gets his share of credit when things are going well. And right now he's he's in an offensive funk. You know he was 0 for 11 coming in. And he's 1 for 6 here yeah. this afternoon. But hey when he's hot that, that's one of the elements that drives this offense because he hits in the three spot. He can drive in runs or he can set the table for the guys behind him. Well a quick. Quick chat out there with Storen, and we'll see. Let's check out his move and see how he 
How quickly he delivers it to home plate. First pitch strike. Looks like he's about average. Change up that uh, has Lindor out in front. Two strikes. Be first and third with one out here in the 15th on a bullet off the bat of Lindor that Junior Lake somehow got a piece of, but then on the ricochet it flew over Barney's head and into right field. How about the English on this ball too? After it goes off Lake, it looked like Barney was going to get it, and when he doesn't, at least knock it down. Kipnis has a chance to go to third base. They'll have runners at the corners. And Hale is going out to take his pitcher out. Boy, that's a break there. The Indians will have an opportunity now to take the lead. Well, we've got a timeout now here in the 15th in a 1-1 ball game. The last man standing in the Toronto bullpen enters the game when we come back. And now the Indians have first and third with one out. Mike Napoli will be coming up. Bo Schultz is the new pitcher, making only his third appearance of the year. But he's shown a good arm from what we've seen already. But he's certainly in a tough spot here. Not much margin for error for Bo Schultz with the go ahead run 90 feet away. 6'3, 230 pound right hander. Lindor took a couple of really yeah. hard steps towards second base, but then jammed on the brakes. Well, they're really pinched in the middle. You know, for Annapolis, a lot of times you'll see three guys over on that side of the field, but look how close they are at uh, Barney at second base. He's right there. Now. 
Missed inside 2 0. Now he delivers a ball and gets gets it to home plate in a hurry. If they walk Napoli, Jose Ramirez waits on deck. Well, Napoli be disciplined. He'll be looking for something he wants here to at least elevate. Low 3 0. All right. Well, this is really probably the way you want it. You'd love to see Napoli walk, get on first base. Now, does he, if he's. If, he, if it's to his liking 3 0, green light, right? I would think so. Why not? But you, you know, you have to have that discipline there. Taking all the way, it looked okay. like. He didn't want any part of it, so let's see. He wanted to see what was going on. And that was one to, that was down, not that you can hit in the air as easily. First and third, one out in the 15th. And Bo Schultz deals. Napoli with a ground ball hard, hit the third. Donaldson goes to the second for one, back to first. Double play. Schultz pulls the rabbit out of the hat. And we are still tied at one. Bottom of the 15th inning, and the ninth pitcher of the game for the Indians is Trevor Bauer. He was scheduled to start tomorrow's game, so that would appear to be off the table now. Yeah, no question. Now, now you're, you're trying to win this ball game. Now the Indians have had the, a, a couple of opportunities in the 10th and then the 15th inning to score. Ramirez hits one here. You think it's going to be a base hit to score? Pilar makes a beautiful diving catch right there to end the inning and take a base hit. Napoli hits it on the nose. Donaldson makes the play and they turn the double play to get it out of it. So a big boost right there for Toronto. And now Trevor Bauer coming on. And it will be. Devon Travis, Michael Saunders, and Russell Martin. And Bowers' first pitch up and away. Up and away. Paints the outside corner, two and one. For Trevor Bauer, obviously it's something that's a little unusual when you're in 
the mindset of ham hey, starting tomorrow. Everything's geared up for that. But at some point today, Mickey Callaway went to him and said, hey, we're, we might need you in the bullpen. And so you kind of get a, a bit of an adrenaline surge because it's something unusual, something that's not normal. Yeah, and this Bauer is just, just hoping out that of that the can carry him. This is out of the ordinary. Usually you would try and get your guy that's on a throw day to get up there and get loose, but maybe, I, and I thought that would be Kluber, but he probably threw earlier in the day. Yeah. Right back to him. Bauer will flip it to first. One away. Knowing Trevor, in his mind, he wants to go out here and have a one, two, three inning and then say, okay, I'm, I'll be good to go again tomorrow. <laughs> Well, you know what? I, I wouldn't think it would bother him. These guys are, are locked into it. Whatever it takes, man, they still have this streak going. You're, you've got something that you can set that has never been done before in this uh, organization, so why not? Let's go. They're looking for number 14. Whatever it takes. Win today and we'll take care of tomorrow when we get there. That's the philosophy, isn't it? Absolutely. Pop back out of play. You know, it, it just mind boggling when you're you're here in the 15th inning and it's still just a 1 1 ball game. Both teams with nine hits. The Indians have left 12. Toronto has left 13 aboard. Man, Jim is getting beat off. up back there. Yes, he is. He took the first one that was in the dirt off that right forearm or hand. You can see the welt on his right forearm. You can see yeah. it from here. Yeah. Life of a catcher. Yeah, and they don't complain. It's not fun. Look at that well on his right forearm. Wow. Swung on and missed. He threw it by him. And there are two down in the 15th. Five times today. Saunders has gone down. That's uh, 97, by the way, for Bauer. Boom. Well, that tells you he's not thinking about tomorrow. He's not thinking about his start. He's thinking about, I'm going to come out, throw as hard as I can for as long as I can. Yep. Josh Tolley came on for Russell Martin when he was ejected. High fly ball, deep right field, not deep enough. Lonnie Chisinau makes the catch. And we go to the 16th inning in Toronto. Tied at one.
Bo Schultz got the double play ball to get out of the 15th. So he stays on to work here in inning number 16. And Jose Ramirez. Oh, for six will lead it off. And it takes a strike. Down low. Hard hit ground ball in the right field, and Ramirez gets the inning started off on a good note for the Indians. Hey, Andre's still here. Let's go down and talk to him for he a while. He's definitely still here. I always stick with the curve. You know, as Lonnie Chisinau comes up to the plate, he admitted in Atlanta that he's ridden the roller coaster, that he's been up and down, and he said he's guilty of it, but he says he's at a point where it's time for him to stay level headed and push the hot streaks out and try to limit those cold streaks. He understands where he's at in his career, and he says for him to be a part of this team and lead, he's got to get out of those roller coasters and become more consistent day in and day out. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Lonnie fouls this one back. 97 Bo Schultz he can rush it up there and I mentioned this the other day it's, a, it's amazing to me that a guy with the size that he has and the arm that he has could be just given up on but you know that's what happened he he was out there on waivers and the Blue Jays just picked him up at the end of the 2014 season after Arizona cut him loose. Not that Arizona didn't have good reason. I mean, he didn't pitch well. Well, you, you, you never know. Sometimes with these guys, when their arm is so so good, or you know, they've got a explosive fastball. No, but you make a good point, Rick. And in, in that, in baseball, patience is often rewarded. It's just how long can you wait? Right. Can one organization wait? Because there's so many guys coming through. You've got draft picks. You've got other people that have been in the organization. Guys, you got to protect. So it is tough to be patient, especially sometimes with a, a bullpen guy. The Indians hadn't been patient. If they hadn't been patient with Carlos Car Carrasco, right. he'd be a Cy Young candidate somewhere else right now. Well, uh, and when you look at it too, uh, being patient with him, that gives you somebody from that Cliff Lee trade too. <laughs> That yeah. has done a wonderful job and anywhere Cliff has gone that's that's the best piece to, to his puzzle anywhere he's been is Carrasco. Now the one two a little bit high. Well and I think of um, a guy that comes to mind is Michael Pineda. You know he came over from Seattle in a, in a big trade. I don't remember who he came for but the catcher. Uh, Montero Miguel Montero yes. everybody talked about hey Pineda he's going to be lights out he's going to be this he's going to be that the 2 2 he has struggled with the Yankees but boy his last couple of starts have been really good and yeah. they think maybe he's turned the, turned the corner. corner yeah well just what he said about Chisnall you've got to find a consistency level at this at this level at the big leagues and if you can't be consistent then you know that's sometimes you do have to Cut bait. Well, he's trying to keep the momentum going here for Cleveland. The 2 2. Upstairs, full count. Schultz tried to throw that one through the back wall of the Rogers Center here. It's all right. Now you got to start him. 3 2. Get something happen. Maybe create a hole. I think Lonnie's going to be putting it in play. He's been swinging it well. Runner goes 3 2 foul back.
The 16th inning. With the Indians having their leadoff man aboard. Ramirez goes on the 3 2 pitch, and Lottie lines one into left center field. That's in the gap. That'll get down. Ramirez coming into third base. He's going to be stopped there as Chisinau holds with a long single to left center field. Boy, yes. another great job by Pilar. Otherwise, yeah. Ramirez scores, and Lonnie's still running. He cut that gap off, and Lonnie with his fourth hit. How about that? And he stayed on it beautifully. That ball out over the plate. I bet if you look at his hits today, everyone was the same. Going the other way, staying back, and Ramirez was off and running. And Pilar does the job. He cuts it off and keeps the double play in order. Not that that matters. They're concerned with the guy at third base, but a nice job of hitting there. Well, you're right, though, Rick. Three of the four have gone right to that same spot. He had a little bloop in yeah, the right but field. When but you look at those pitches out over the plate, the fastballs, he stayed on, boy, and uh, just served it. And he took what the pitcher gave him. Now, Pete Walker, the pitching coach, went out to discuss some strategy here. And he has had first and third, nobody out. And Michael Martinez, who just came into the game in the 14th inning, he was trying to bunt back then, and he ended up with a ground out. The Blue Jays will play the infield in. The middle infielders play even with the bags. And Martinez slashes it out of play the other way. It's 0 and 1. High pop. That's going to get it done on the infield. Tulowitzki makes the catch. Boy, is that a huge first out now for the Blue Jays. Oh, now a double saying. play when could get him out of the That's what inning. I say, with that ball being cut off in the gap, and he can get that out without the run scoring, the double play is still in order. And Tyler Naquin is the batter. And he is one for six today. Singled his first time up. He did hit a fly ball to deep right field in the 11th. In tight. Yeah, just remain patient. You got to look for your uh, ball that you can handle. You don't have to go out of the zone because he, you look at it this way. You've got uh, Jimenez on deck. And you still have a base open even though it is second base. You could have the bases loaded. That would put a little more pressure on you, but you don't have to give in. Tyler Naquin trying to deliver here. The 1 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Now Bo Schultz ready with a one two pitch. Inside almost hit him two and two. He's trying to dodge a couple bullets. He got the double play to get out of last inning. Right now first and third nobody out. He's trying to he's going for the punch out here. And a foul back. You notice they're really trying to smother Naquin. No sure. swinging room allowed. Absolutely. And uh, Tolley's going to go out and talk to him. 
elevate. He said he's the good low ball hitter. You got to concentrate down on the zone. But what the, the base runners out there do put a little more pressure on you to you want to get him in so badly. Sometimes you you forget about your zone. And he was uh, he, he got him to swing through a couple of fastballs up in, in this at bat. And the 2 2 upstairs full count. Waiting on deck is Chris Jimenez. Yeah, and he doesn't have to give in here either. You got to go out there and, and, and go at him. And if you're Tyler Naquin, man, make him get that high fastball down, not around the letters. Although it's hard, it's easy to say because it's been a high strike zone today. Struck him out. Two down. Well, there's that nice stroke going to left field on the fastball away. Another one that way. He's, he does turn on one, get it off the end of the bat, and bloops it in. But then this one in this inning just set it up, takes that fastball away. And what a job by that guy to cut off the gap. He's got a chance to get out of it now. First and third, nobody out there are now first and third with two outs. It's up to Chris Jimenez now. His first at bat of the game. Ripped it foul and almost picked off Ramirez. And now he's down 0 2. Actually, it was closer to Sarbi than it was to Ramirez. Now the 0-2. The 16th inning. First and third, two down, and the 1-2 pitch. And a line drive to third ends the inning.
there at the Rogers Center in Toronto. It has been thoroughly frustrating now in these extra innings for the Indians because they've had some really good scoring chances that have gone by the boards. Toronto will send up Troy Tulowitzki now. Junior Lake and Kevin Pillar. Trevor Bauer, second inning of relief. Fastball strike. He set him down one, two, three in the 15th. Again, if you're just tuning in, Bauer slated to start tomorrow's game, so that's out. He'll need a starter for tomorrow now, but there was nobody left in the bullpen. Yeah, I was looking if they just tuned in for the fourth time tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they might have been and, and you know it's a day game here so it sort of seems like the weekend does but it's only Friday. Yep. Friday afternoon here on Canada Day. High pop foul out of play. Like I said when you play games like this you, these are ones you truly want to win. Because it has it's going to have an impact on them when you play a game this long. And they have <laughs> fought all the way. These aren't toy figures. You don't just put them in the box and break them out again tomorrow. <laughs> no, sir. They've got to sleep and eat. And this is, a, I mean, it drains you mentally more than anything and physically. Now the one, two. And it just seems like the Indians have had many more chances to score than what uh, Toronto has. And, you know, you, you look at it, and we say it a lot when you get to extra innings, and sometimes. Everybody wants to end it with one one swing of the bat, but you got to create your situations right here. No, yeah, they don't they get, get much there. better than first and third. And nobody no, out. Right. right, they don't. But they, they they couldn't score there. I've just been told they sent Ryan Goins. To the Blue Jay bullpen. He's the last guy on the bench. He's an he's an infielder by trade. <laughs> but in worst case scenario, they may go to him if needed. Chopped in the hole. Lindor with a great stop, but no chance to get him. An infield single for Tulowitzki. And Toronto gets their leadoff man aboard. Good effort by Lindor, but by the time you get up to throw it on this surf, he's going to be down the line and get in there. So the leadoff single by Tulo, that's his third hit of the day. He's been walked twice. Now here's Junior Lake. Our first uh, look at him. Lake is out of the Dominican Republic. Originally signed by the Chicago Cubs back in 07. Swing and a miss gets away and down to second goes to Lewinsky. Well, it's a pass ball and now the winning run is in scoring position. With yeah, nobody that, out. That, that ball just jumped out of the glove. It was a fastball. He swings through. They wanted away, but it just caught, I think, down in the crease of the glove. It didn't get into the pocket. And Tulowitzki read it and saw it, and he could easily cruise down into second base. So that's the winning run right there on the pass ball. Now the one one. Chopped to third. Ramirez will look him back. Makes a throw. Got him. Nice play by Jose Ramirez. And there are two down, and that runner still at second base. I'm making one out. Well, he had to 
go back on this ball and he has to think about the guy at second base too. He looks him back makes the quick throw. Gets enough up and on it to get him at first base. So nice look back. To Lewitsky stayed at second. And with one away Kevin Pilar will be the batter. He's one for six. And he nice takes a fastball pitch. strike. Out of play. Oh, and two. Looked like he was uh, trying to sit there and maybe slap the. Look, uh, uh, that was a weird swing. Yeah. He nailed the outside corner with the pitch before, so you think maybe you take a shot at going to right field with next pitch. Now the 0 2. Just outside. Blue Jays have allowed some scoring chances to slip away in extra innings as well. They had uh, two on on the 11th. Runner got to third. Leadoff man aboard in the 13th. They had him loaded in the 14th. Brown bounced a breaking ball. And from 0 2 back to 2 and 2. But as far as runs are concerned, a lot of zeros up there. If you tuned in late, the Indians scored in the third to grab the lead on an RBI single by Jason Kipnis. Stayed 1 0 the Indians led until the sixth on a solo homer by Junior Lake. Oh, excuse me by uh, Justin Smoke. Two down. To Lewitsky the third. Called him safe. Oh, he called him safe. Yes, he did. And now they're looking wow. to see if they want to, uh, you know, challenge that. Lindor took his time here going up the middle. He took a quick peek to third. Why? I don't know. And Pilar going down the line may have beaten it. Yeah, he, he sure did. did. Yeah, he sure did. You know what? He wow. took his time, and uh, there's the hustle. That, that is potentially a very costly miscue. Yes, it is. Because now they have first and third and one out. I'm trying to figure out why would he have even looked to third. Had, on that. I, I, I don't really know because there's nothing he could have he could have done about it anyway. He was going to his left. The only out he had was first base. Well, that changes the complexion of this inning in a big way. Yeah, the outfield has to come in. The winning run. And Darwin Barney is the batter. And that's ball one. Luis Rivera, former Indians coach, going through the signs down at third. The infield is in for the Indians, the outfield drawn in as well. And Barney cuts through a high fastball. It's one on one. Sit inside, but that was a little dart right there. He see if he can elevate and go back up again and get him to chase a fastball. 
The Indians had a runner at third in the top half of the inning with nobody out and did not score. Blue Jays had that runner at third with one out. And the one two pitch is way outside and a good stop by Jimenez. He's made a ton of those already. Comes a breaking ball. It's going to be in the dirt. And as you mentioned, he has seen a number of those since coming into this game. Keeps it out in front of him and it'll go to a 2 2 count. Bowers pitch popped up. They're going to be a tough play. Lindor, he'll get there, make the catch, and the runners cannot advance. Sometimes that's what you worry about when the infield right. is drawn in is a little blue pit. Even though the outfielders come in, you're right, that's the toughest play, but Bauer made a beautiful pitch here to elevate it and get it in, and he couldn't extend the arms. Look at that pitch. Boy, that's above the belt. Right at the trademark of that bat. You can see it almost at the light color of that bat and going to the dark color of the barrel. What a pitch. Gets him to pop it up and now. Still lives for another hitter. They get the second out. And with two down, Ezekiel Carrera will be the batter. Carrera had a chance to win it in the 14th, and he ended up drawing a walk to load the bases. Now he's got another opportunity in the 16th. And Trevor Bauer is hoping to get the third out and give the Indians another chance in the 17th inning. Wow. Carrera reaches and fouls it back out of play. You wonder too, Rick, as the as the physical fatigue takes its toll on a player in a game like this, does that transfer then to mental mistakes oh. because you're just physically starting it, to get tired? It, it's draining both ways. That's why that play at shortstop, Lindor. That's what I'm that's thinking. Automatic. But why he looked to third is beyond me, and he was just a little slow at getting it to first. Threw it by him. 0 and 2. Now Bauer one one pitch away from getting out of it. Keeping it a 1 1 game. It's a battle of wills here now. 1 1 ball game. Hits are even at 11 apiece. Indians have left 14. Blue Jays have stranded 13. But they have two on with two out here in the 16th inning. In the dirt, nice stop by Jimenez. I'll tell you what, he has been all over the place. He's going to be in an ice tub after the game. All the things he's blocking. Bauer checks the runners and the one two offering in the air out of play. Jim is out for a quick check. And now he won't even have to put a sign down. Knows what he wants to throw. Bauer ready. He fires. Nice Catch. strike three call. Got him. And the inning is over. And we play on to the 17th. Still deadlocked at one.
in the bottom of the 16th inning. Well, you know, he picked up his defense. There you go. He, the, the hustle beats it out at first base and went first and third, and then boy made a beautiful fastball up and in to get the second out, and then Dan, look at him. He says yes. Good high fastball, so we're going to the 17th. The Indians have had a runner to third base in each of the last three innings. But they haven't been able to get anybody home since the third inning. And Santana started that inning with a double to center. Yeah. Just missed outside one of the ones around was out of pitchers. This is the last one and the Indians have their starter that was supposed to pitch tomorrow in there and has already pitched a couple of innings. Bo Schultz has pitched an inning and two thirds to this point. And that might have been a strike had he caught it. Totally couldn't squeeze it. And it's two and one. This is a good looking pitch as it comes in but when you don't catch it it's hard to get the call sometimes. Well that's true. Well remember he was catching a knuckleball last night now he's trying to catch 96 97 that's a little <laughs> difference. And actually it looked like he tried to frame that a little bit didn't it. He held it there he tried did. to. And Santana rolls over on a pitch and he'll be retired one down. The two runs in the game looked like this. This was way back in the third. Jason Kipnis drove a single up the gut, scoring Santana, who had doubled. And then in the sixth, opposite field, solo home run by Smoke. That's been it. Up comes Jason Kipnis. Jason in addition to that RBI single has walked he's also been hit by a pitch today. Him. That thing went behind him. As a hitter, you never see a pitch go where that one was located. I mean, it bounced behind him in the left handed batter's box. Look at, he started to jump on, you know, out of the way, but you would have Usually been jumping into the way. Do. I know. Wow. And at 96 miles an hour, there's not a lot of time to know. Well, it's just weird when you see something like that. You never see a release point go that far behind you. Now the 2 2. Way upstairs. And now it's a full count. Francisco Lindor waiting on deck. Popped him up back out of play. Josh Tolley, the Toronto catcher, earlier in his career, he was in the Mets organization, and he credits Sandy Alomar with doing a lot of work with him to help him develop defensively as a catcher. Now, certainly Sandy didn't work with him on how to catch the knuckleball, but.
A set up inside and the three two came back over the plate struck him out anyway. That's because he elevated that pitch probably just above the belt to where it's a little tougher to get to it. Well exhaustion I think setting in now they're maybe out of the zone. You can see he was upset he swung at that pitch. And now the trainer's coming out to look at the pitcher Schultz. Looks like he's talking about his landing spot. Down off the mound. Let's see. Yeah. Like his foot slipped a little bit, you know? Right where in that landing spot. Uh-huh. It, it didn't hold. Taking a couple of warm up throws, he says he's okay. <laughs> they have no other options. Yeah, I mean, you better be okay. Ryan Goins is up in the bullpen. He's an infielder. Yeah, no other options whatsoever. Position player if they want to make a move. In the meantime, there are two down on the bases are empty, and Francisco Lindor will be the batter. Lindor had a base hit his last time up. Ball that was sharply hit it, hit off the glove of the first baseman. And then Karen by the second baseman. Ground ball in the hole. And Lindor has a two out single to keep the inning alive. Well, that's the third hit of the day for Lindor. And Mike Napoli comes up. He is one for seven today. And Napoli had a chance to put the Indians ahead in the 15th, hit a ball hard, but he hit it right to Josh Donaldson at third, who started an inning ending double play. Now Tulowitzki coming out to make sure that everything's okay with his pitcher, Schultz. Given the uh, fatigue factor, I wouldn't expect Lindor to take off and try to steal here. No, it's you're right. It's it's set in for everybody out there. Pulls it foul. The Indians now have one more hit than the Blue Jays on the afternoon. 12 for Cleveland, 11 for Toronto. Strike. Good pitch. Once again, the crowd wants to come up and 
see him get the third out here. The one two. Popped him up. And we're still tied as we go to the bottom of the 17th, 1-1. his third inning of relief work. He was scheduled to start tomorrow's game. But the Indians simply didn't have anyone left in the bullpen. He is the ninth Indians pitcher to work in today's game. The only bullpen pitcher that was not used was Cody Allen because he had pitched three consecutive days. Now Josh Donaldson leading off for Toronto. 0 for 5 today. 1 for 9 in the series to this point, and that's outside. Devon Travis is next, then Michael Saunders. Then he walked him on four. So Toronto has their leadoff man aboard for the second inning in a row. Third, make that fourth time in the last five innings. Devon Travis came on when Edwin Encarnacion was ejected after his first at bat of the afternoon. And he had a long late swing on that fastball. Hit and run. And it's hit to right field. Double play. If he catches the ball, he's got it. He can take his time, lob it back to first. Double play. That's the chance you take. I mean, you start your runner, and as the hitter, you certainly want to hit it on the ground. This one was in the air. He hit it too hard. And with the head down, you've got to at least peek to see what he does with the baseball if the hit runs on, and it's an easy double play for Chisenhall. So Bauer, yeah, leadoff walk, they get the double play. There you have it. 
And it will bring up Michael Saunders. Not only is he 0 for 7 and struck out in his last at bat, he has struck out five out of the seven times today. Five strikeouts today, three yesterday. So eight punch outs in the 11 at bats he has in the series. Down low. That also is a pretty good indicator of how well this Indians pitching staff is throwing the ball because Michael Saunders isn't one of those run of the mill swing and miss guys. He came in batting 289 on the year with 15 homers and 20 doubles. Well, we're almost into into three games so far in the two days here. They've only scored two runs yes. in the series. You that know what I mean? You everything Think you need to know that. right, right. There. Yeah. It, it's unbelievable. Uh, it, it almost looks like hey no one's trying to win this game. Oh they're trying. They're trying very hard. Both teams are. They are exhausted now. Boy we need Tommy Bo here to count how many balls were out in the dirt for Jimenez. And he he's has, only been on since what the 15th. Uh, yeah he's been well. When did he come in. Let me think. He, he pinched it uh, or he came on yeah the 15th inning. It seems like he's been blocking a ton of wow a rare walk for Saunders keeps the inning alive two walks in the inning for Bauer. It'll bring up Josh Tolley who tried to end it his last time up but his fly ball was just shy of the warning track in right field. There's a strike right down Broadway at the knees. And it's one on one. Each team has left 15 men on base to this point. Pop back out of play. It is about hit Toronto by one, 12 to 11. But where it matters most, we're still even at one apiece. count two and two. Take a look at what Bauer has done 52 pitches into the game he's thrown 29 strikes. He hasn't had a breaking ball that he could rely on. But you have to also remember this is so different for him in that since he came into this game every pitch could be the last one of the game. Yes. So these are all max effort stressful pitches. Out of play. Well, when he's starting a ball game, he gives up a solo home run in the first, second, or third inning. It's no big deal. We can come back from that. But in these situations, just giving up a base hit could end the streak. Two. 
Got him looking. Punched him out with a fastball in the inside corner. And we will go to the 18th inning in Toronto. Tied at one. inning now and Toronto has exhausted its supply of pitchers so they have turned to Ryan Goins who is the last player eligible on their bench today and he yeah. will come in to pitch now sometimes you know you, you, you kind of laugh at these things but sometimes we've seen guys actually do pretty well but a lot of times when you see a position player come in to pitch it's because the game's already out of hand right this it's is a little different. One way or the other, no question. His first major league appearance as a pitcher. And, you know, this game is going to have an impact for the rest of the series because the pitchers, everyone's been used. The Indians already used their starter for tomorrow. He's pitching in this ball game right now. Um, so, boy, it's, it's going to, we're going to see how the rest of this series goes. But first of all, we've got to end this one. Ryan Goins is a native of Texas from Round Rock. Blue Jays drafted him in the fourth round in 09 out of Dallas Baptist University. Making his debut though on the pitching mound. And he gets Ramirez to swing and miss. You know the funny thing when he was warming up Matt he was going to throw him from the full windup. Now he's going from the stretch. That is weird. Down on the dirt. Like any manager, when you turn to a position player, here's the first question they ask. Can you throw strikes? Yeah, well, can you throw strikes? You don't want anybody to get hurt because it, it, it may look simple, but it's not. To go out there when you're not a pitcher and you're in a game situation. But he's throwing 85, 86. That one is what, 87? Yep. And this crowd, oh, what's left yeah. of it, they love it. it. It really has gotten the crowd into it. That was up to 90 miles an hour. You talk about the adrenaline flowing, huh? Yes, the sir. crowd has it no, kicked I in bet, for him. I yeah. bet you're right. He's feeling that extra boost from the crowd. There were 45,825 at one point today. Some of them have taken the party outside. The 2-2. And a ground ball single in the left field for Jose Ramirez. Well, uh, Jose did a nice job to stay on that pitch. It was a breaking ball, and he serves it the other way. So here you go, and I'll tell you what, not a bad pitch. No, that's a good breaking by ball. By the way, for a guy coming in here, it's off the dish. He had to reach for it. That's really a nice job by Ramirez to get a base hit there. Well, you've got a guy coming up that has four hits. 
And Lonnie Chisinau takes aim. And he socks one in the right make center it field. Five. You Ramirez is going to hit go. second. He'll turn and burn. He'll make it to third base. As the throw is not in time, gets That's away. Up. And now Lonnie almost got too far off the bag at first, but he scampers back safely. And now the Indians have runners at the corners with nobody out. Oh. As Lonnie Chisinau five. has a five nice. hit afternoon. Last time he had five hits had to be Texas when he had the three home runs. But this one he gets down first pitch that one he turned on a little bit it was down and away but he's not throwing with the velocity as a starter or a bullpen guy would. So back to back hits those guys set the table a couple innings ago. Third time Lonnie's had a five hit game in his career. The last time was that Texas unbelievable game in Texas the time before that same season right here in Toronto. No kidding. Don't remember that. Now Michael Martinez takes ball one. He is 0 for 2 since he entered the game as a pinch hitter in the 14th inning. He was trying to get a bunt down at that point. He did not. And now a ground ball to second. They're going to come home with the throw. Ramirez is going to try to stay in the rundown. Come on home. He's going to. They can move up. They will move up the runners. They got him out. He's out of the baseline. Carapaza uh, calls him out for being out of the baseline. He did his job. He did a wonderful job to get in that rundown and let the guys go move up. It enabled Chisenhall to get to third. You give it up, and they gave it up just a hair too early. He's got to get rid of it now. And once you start running the home plate, the runners advance. And that's a big play right there, staying in by Ramirez. Again, Martinez couldn't get the job done. Now you have first base open. You've got Naquin coming to the plate. Not that it matters. You you don't have a pitcher on the mound. So, you know, you, I don't think you want to give up anything, do you, as far as walking the bases loaded? Well, we'll see. We'll we see will. what they decide to do. An unconventional 4-2-5-1 put out on Ramirez for the first out in the inning. And they look like they're going to walk him. Yeah, it. they are. They're going to intentionally walk him. You know we've had this conversation before about how not any not with regards to a game like this but say runners in scoring position how sometimes it seems like you can't get one for and then they just come they fall and right boat, boat loads uh -huh. Th this game has been like that and that it has during this win streak the Indians have scored at will many times six seven runs at a clip <laughs> today they've got one run on the board and it, it seemed like it has taken a Herculean effort to get that second run home. It does, and they're going to have to get it done this time because they have had opportunities. They had it back in the 16th inning, 16th with the you know first and third, and nobody out and couldn't couldn't get it done. It's first and third here in the 18th. Now they have the bases loaded, just one out, and you have a position player pitching, and Chris Jimenez will have the opportunity here with the bases loaded and one out. Now Chris. It was only the second time he's batted. He came on in the 15th. He lined out to the third baseman, Josh Donaldson, his only time up. That was with two on and two out in the 16th inning. And he takes a strike. That's impressive enough for a guy who's not a pitcher to intentionally walk somebody and then yeah, when he's got to throw a strike boom he did. And a ground ball to Lewitsky to get out they get one and two.
Troy Tulowitzki will lead it off for Toronto. Tulowitzki looks at a high fastball. There's a strike. It's got to be hard for a pitcher to separate his emotions from the momentum of a game. And when you're sitting in that dugout and you're looking, seeing Thank your you. team got a chance right here, and then it doesn't happen. How do you not that let affect you? Well, you got to come out there. You have to be tough. And if anybody could do it, I would think Trevor Bauer can. He's picked up his defense already tonight. Now it's time you got to pick up your offense. They had many opportunities now. Another foul back. To Lewitsky singled his first time up today, and he walked in the fourth. Flied out twice to center, walked in the eleventh. He singled to lead off the fourteenth inning, and then singled to lead off the sixteenth inning. Made it as far as third base in that sixteenth, but was stranded there. This one's coming back our way. Down into the crowd it goes. Stays two and two. And a ground ball to Lindor at short. Slings it over, one away. Trevor Bauer came out of the 15th inning and set him down one two three. You know he's been trying to work that uh, breaking ball in but he's he's gone with a lot of fastballs he's located it. And uh, he's really come in and done a nice job. This is the guy that was supposed to start tomorrow for the Indians. Had to come in here. And if you remember at the start of this trip he moved up a, a, a start because Kluber was supposed to start in Detroit Bauer made the start in front of him. It was on a regular rotation for him he had enough rest it wasn't short rest by any means. Junior Lake. Came on as a pinch runner. I think it was in the 14th. I forgot to mark it down. Yeah, it was for uh, Smoke. Only his second at bat. Junior Lake was originally signed by the Cubs when he was a teenager. 
And then last year at the trading deadline, Cubs dealt him to Baltimore to get Tommy Hunter. And then he was claimed off waivers by the Blue Jays this past off season. And he walks him. Winning run aboard with one out in the 18th for Toronto. And the batter will be Kevin Pillar. Pillar only has one hit today, but boy, has he made some good plays defensively. One in particular that saved the game for the Blue Jays. That was back in the 10th inning. Junior Lake takes off, and Pilar fouls it up the third baseline. Trying to make something happen. You know, last we, time they tried that, it yeah, backfired. Back, yeah, just last inning, getting out of it. But you talk about the, you know, the frustration, the, the fatigue setting in both mentally and physically. Think about that home plate umpire. How many pitches he's seen today? Yeah. And had to call. He's got to be exhausted as well. A little weary, huh? You would think so. Certainly would think so, though, especially the way this game started out. Popped him up. The infield. Lindor makes the catch two down. And it will bring up Darwin Barney. Two down in the 18th. If the Blue Jays don't score, we'll start our third game of the day. Wow, that one was bearing in on him, and somehow as he went to get out of the way, it went off the bat for a foul ball. Boy, he, he's lucky there. I mean, let's see where this one comes in. He's trying to bend and get out of the way, and it gets the bat. Lucky. But it really you know, wasn't that no, bad of a it, pitch. No, it wasn't. I mean, he's just, he was looking away, is what I'm thinking. And once he got ready to go out there, he couldn't get out of the way. For some of these hitters today, this game has been like a trip to the dentist. <laughs> For Darwin Barney, he knows all about that. His dad's a dentist, his brother's a dentist. He majored in pre dentistry in college until the course load got to be too much. You better have a shot of Novocaine. <laughs> Here's the O2. Not give me one. <laughs> Pitch out, but the runner was not going. That was pitched 580 into this ball game. Super. But you know, it's, we but are who's in the 18th inning. But, but who's keeping track? Not right? me. <laughs> and the one-two runner goes this time. It's in the dirt. They figure once you pitch out, you're not going to do it again, so send the runner. Yeah, that's true. You're not going to do it twice. 
And you know, there you go. He picked the right pitch because Bauer hasn't thrown many breaking balls, and even the guy at first base, a first baseman, he looked back in to see where the pitch was. And the 2 2 pitch in on the ground at first, backhanded by Napoli. Long toss, and Bauer reached back to grab it and sends us to the 19th inning with this game still tied at one. Darwin Barney who's been playing second base all game long now in the 19th inning he's going to come in and pitch and Devin Travis who was the DH is going to go to second base so oh no we lose the DH well there aren't any pitchers left anyway yeah it doesn't. <laughs> you got what you got <laughs> so they're just going to play rotating pitcher until this game comes to an end Pretty one way or the other be like the king in his court he'll be the pitcher and about three or four other players out there. <laughs> Goings went out there and he did it. Where's his Goings job. at? So he's just out of the game? Yeah, because they put the DH into the oh, game. Oh, yeah, right. So okay, he's yeah, out there. So he he just, may, may come up and pitch in the back end of their bullpen now. He did a nice job getting did. out of that inning, to be honest with Got you. Out of a pretty good jam. So here in the 19th, we go to the top of the order. And Carlos Santana. Darwin Barney is the Tenth pitcher to work in this game for Toronto. Santana one for seven, doubled and scored the Indians' only run back in the third. And he misses down low one and one. Barney, who grew up in Oregon, went to Oregon State. He was the shortstop for the two time Division I NCAA champs. Went to the College World Series three different times. Missed inside three and one. Oh, he swings, pops it back, but it's out of play. Full count. You'd love this. Barney's a kind of a throwback in that growing up, 
His family didn't specialize him. He played soccer, basketball, football, and of course baseball. An athlete. Yeah. Play it all. Enjoy it all. The 3 2 is popped up. Foul. And this will be close. Just Didn't make the seats, but with that shift on, yeah. no way Donaldson could get there. That's, that's right. That's about 130 feet of having to run. He was playing way up the middle over there at shortstop in a pull position. He'd have to run all the way into the foul territory and keep going. And that's not what you want to do when you're into the 19th <laughs> inning. <laughs> the 3 2 is hit hard. Deep center field. Back is Pilar, and it's gone. Carlos Santana puts the Indians on top finally with his 17th home run of the year here in the 19th inning. Now Carlos did a nice job of fouling a couple of pitches off and finally got one to handle and he didn't miss it. <laughs> that sounds like a pack of coyotes in that yes, dugout. It does. Or hyenas. <laughs> Jason Kipnis takes the ball down low. Well, there's your there's your one run with one swing. Came off a full count and Santana hits his 17th. And now Kipnis pops one up left field. Saunders comes in and makes the catch. Well, let's take a look at this pitch again, and he gets one right there, down enough. He stayed on it. It was a line drive, and it goes out and it hits the facing above the fence to come back into play. Right back into play. One swing, and it's a two to one ball game. Now, this is another one of those games that is a rarity in that we've Played this long, 19 innings. Mike Pachta says it's the latest an Indians player has hit a home run in a game since Willie Kirkland hit a walk-off homer against Washington in 1963. Okay. Santana's not a walk-off, but it has given the Indians the lead. Redbird's been going through the books then in the scorecard. He said that was in the 19th inning of a double, a game of a doubleheader. Oh boy. Well, this is a doubleheader. <laughs> it's just, we just condensed it into one game. <laughs> Napoli smashes one foul. Get out of the way of that one, folks. The Indians lead it two to one. They have out hit Toronto 15 to 11. But the two teams have combined to leave 34 men on base. That one was right down the line, but I don't know if it had enough or it was. No, it was shorter than it was yellow. short. Okay. But not by much. Look at they're saying, give us one more. Go the other way. They're saying, push it out there. Don't go down the line. The one, two. Napoli pulls it off. A little foul. sinker. Now the one, two. He got him with a little breaking ball. And the inning is over. But Carlos Santana has given the Indians the lead. Two to one on a solo shot in the 19th inning.
Boy, do we know how to celebrate or what? <laughs> they may have to push back the uh, fireworks out on the lake. Yes, we do. Well, you need three more outs to get a win here. And Ezekiel Carrera to lead off for the Blue Jays. Then he's got to face Josh Donaldson and Devon Travis. Did not go. 2 0. Been a few times today where Bowers fallen behind hitters. First couple of pitches, but then he seems to find that groove and come right back. To first base, Napoli smothers it nicely. One down. All right, our Pat O'Brien play of the game at this point. Let's go to the 16th inning. Pilar got that. Goofy base hit up the middle, and it's first and third with one out. He hustled his way to first base, and Bauer comes back and saves him. Got the big pop up, made a beautiful pitch to the inside part of the plate, and then gets a strikeout to get out of that. And you can see how Bauer was pumped up, and the first one to meet him was Lindor, the one guy that he should have had the out. So they put a zero on the board. If Bauer can get the next two outs. He will have pitched five innings out of the bullpen. Uh oh, look out. Deep right. Back is Chisholm Hall. Makes the catch. A stride shy of the wall. And Dower says, whoo. Donaldson, the big bat in this lineup, almost hit his 20th home run of the year. But there are two down in the inning now. Well, he was trying to stay on it and shoot it that way, but. Chisenhall gets it on the track. Look at Bauer. Thank you for staying in here. Now he's got one more to go. It may not seem like a big deal pitching on short rest, but it can be kind of a big deal when what you're even, not used to it, not ready for it. What even makes it more is you're coming out of the bullpen with the game on the line. Right. Yeah, not a coming it's out not of the a bullpen. start. Not in the sixth inning either, or the no, seventh I, inning. That's, that's, that's extra innings. He came in in the 15th inning where. When you're on the road, one pitch could end the game. And he's done a nice, nice job. Ground ball to short. This should end it. Lindor sets. He throws. And the Cleveland Indians of 2016 have set the franchise record with their 14th consecutive win. And oh, baby, did they earn it going 19 innings north of the border. You're not kidding. They certainly earned it. That's your comfort, too. But boy, I'll tell you what, you talk about hanging in there and doing what you had to do to win a game when things weren't really going their way. And it only took six hours and 13 minutes. What a, what a crazy game. Yeah, well, you know what? You feel so much better about yourself now. You win the ball game. I know they're exhausted. They'll sleep well tonight. But boy, oh boy, they never gave in. Trevor Bauer gets the win. He's now 7 and 2. The loss goes to Darwin Barney, who never expected to be on the mound when this game started this afternoon. But he gave up the solo home run.